will get you everywhere. <laughs> oh. oh, hi, everybody. Hi. Uh, I, I thought you were bringing an escort. Well, I have, but he's a bit of a surprise. A bit of a surprise for everyone, I reckon. Come on in and show yourself. Good day. holiday. That's great. You're looking very prosperous. Oh, feeling it, mate. Good to see you. Where did you hit town? Flew in this afternoon. Who's your friend? Oh, Peter Beckett. Uh, meet the one and only Wendy Price. G'day. Pleased to meet you. Peter's a very old friend of ours. Friend? Not boyfriend. <laughs> oh, of course not. Oh, well, in that case, I am really pleased to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, there you go. Oh, Michael. sorry, Michael. <laughs> you want a drink? Oh, you just said the magic word, mate. Beer, okay? You. Yeah. Hey, you want to give me a hammer drink? <laughs> Is she for real? Wendy lives in her own little world. Oh, that's for sure. But you couldn't meet a nicer person. <laughs> meet Mr. Williams. Oh, well, sorry. Yeah. Uh, this is my boss at the Beck and Call Rex Williams, uh, Peter Beckett. He's all the way from Perth. I hope you don't mind me gay crashing your party. Not at all. The more the merrier is my motto. Well, Peter's the guy who put the uh, Beck into the Beck and Call. Eh? Huh? Peter's surname is Beckett. That's where the Beck comes from. Oh, right. Oh, Charmaine's told me a lot about you. Apparently you had the beck and call running like clockwork. Yeah, well, I can't take all the credit. Miss Mackenzie had me pretty well up to the mark. Oh, have you heard from her lately? No, I haven't. Oh, I had a letter a while back. Married life's really suiting her. <laughs> Lucky Miss Mac. Mrs. Denning now, dear. Oh, I know, but she'll still be Miss Mackenzie to me. Savories? Oh, Peter, this is the girl I was telling you about. My granddaughter, Sarah. Peter Beckett. Hi. Charmaine was telling me the party wouldn't have happened if... Uh, you and Artie hadn't pulled a Swifty on your granddad? No, no, the pair of them deserve a good spanking. <laughs> yeah, well, we had to find some way to keep you home. Couldn't have your birthday party without you. Uh, which reminds me, I've got to make a phone call. I'll be right back. OK. Sarah, make sure everybody gets a drink with you. I'm a change that. Just so long as no one goes dry. Dorothy, it's Rex Williams here. I'm sorry it's such short notice, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to cancel tonight. <laughs> uh, the kids are throwing me a surprise birthday party. Too right, it's nice to be remembered. Uh, listen, why don't you come on over? Oh, don't be silly. They've got to find out about us sooner or later, so what's the difference? Well, if you change your mind. What? Oh, yes, yes, that's a great idea. No, be no trouble at all. I'm, I'm, I'm sure Artie will be as pleased as Punch. Uh, well, I'd better go now. I've got to ring and tell them I won't be at the reunion tonight. First one I've ever missed. Guess what I found out? What? Granddad's got a girlfriend. Don't be stupid. I'm not. I heard him talking to her on the phone. You're supposed to go out with her tonight. Are you sure? I heard him talking to her. The girlfriend. What's her name? Uh, Dorothy. Dorothy? You didn't know anybody called Dorothy. Could it be one of the teachers at your school? No, I'd know about it if it was. It must be somebody he's just met. No wonder Granddad got himself all done up. He's a bit of a ladies' man, if you ask me. Had Miss Pringle eating out of his hands when she was round here. Well, that's not her. I think she stinks. Oh, she's not that bad. Hey, what if it is her? Oh, no. I remember the sign on the desk, Miss D. Pringle. That's who it is. Granddad's dating Miss Pringle. Look, come on, Gloria. Just one more mouthful, OK? Look, watch me. Mmm. Yummy, yummy, yummy. That's great. OK? You try it. <sighs> OK, kid, you win. So what do you want to do? 
I bet if I try and take you to bed, you'll pull your head off. I know. Your Uncle Adam's going to teach you the value of money. Okay, hang in there. I'll be right back. Bakehouse. Oh, hi. How's it going? Great. <laughs> Gloria, stop that. Look, I'll spank you. Adam, what's going on? Is everything okay? Yeah, listen, I gotta go. Um, oh, everything's fine, really. Uh, enjoy the party, eh? Take my tip, Keith. Don't get involved with a career of finance. You never make it. Everything okay on the home front? Oh, I don't know. Adam hung up before I had a chance to say two words to him. Well, that's not like him. I know. I've got a feeling Gloria's giving him a bit of a hard time. He'll cope. Come on, supper's just about ready. Oh, would you hate it if I didn't stay? <laughs> You doting mothers. Oh, I can't help it. I, I just worry about her the whole time if I stayed on. Off you go, then. Wendy is agitating for your presence in the living room. Oh, I better stir Miss Tubbs, then. Thanks for everything you did. I really appreciate it. Oh, it was my pleasure. I just wish I didn't have to rush off so early. <laughs> You're not leaving. Oh, I have to. Babysitter troubles. Uh, uh, why don't you drive her home? Oh, of course. Oh, well, if that's no trouble. Oh, no trouble at all. Oh, thanks. Look, I'll just go and say my goodbyes. Mm. Uh, there's uh, no need to hurry back. When he's ready for the cake. Uh, yeah. What are you up to? Nothing. Nothing. Come off it, mate. I didn't come down the last year. What's going on? Um, putting extra candles on the cake. Have to make sure Harrison think Granddad is sixty-eight. Sure, that's a kid with the red hair? Yeah. So that was what the little fight was about? Yeah. I bet it hurt that my granddad was older than her grandma. But he's not. He's 66 today and she's 67. So you lost the bet? Yeah, but I can't let Cheryl find that out. Well, why not? What's at stake? If she wins, I have to be her partner at the dance exhibition. <laughs> I see. He won't dob me in, will you? I have never dobbed on a mate in my life. Beauty. But a bet is a bet, and if you lose, you should be prepared to pay up. You don't know what she's like. I hate her. That'll fix it. What's the hard up with the cake? Nothing, nothing at all. It's all fixed. Have you seen Lady, Mr. Williams? He was here a minute ago. Uh, he might be in the kitchen. I'll go and have a look. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, to you. Happy birthday dear Mr. Williams. Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Oh, now make a wish. Ah, uh, oh, I don't know that I've got anything to wish for. I've got everything I want. <laughs> uh, you two will have to help me blow them out. I've never seen so many candles in all my life. <laughs> you don't have to check up on me. They're all there. You made me lose count. Okay, all together now. <gasps> Yay! Well, uh, I don't know what I can say, except that this is the happiest birthday I've ever had in all my 66 years. 66. Hi. You're home early? Oh, I had the feeling you had a few problems. What's that? Hmm, well, I'm hoping it's still legal tender. Don't tell anybody, but the bakehouse ripper is still at large. Oh, no, she didn't. Yeah, oh, it was my own stupid fault. I was trying to keep her amused. A fool and his money. You can say that again. Oh, look, I'll pay you back. Don't be silly. I'm going out now. I'm not coming back until I've spent all of this. And don't disturb Gloria. I just managed to get her to sleep. Okay? Thanks. Oh, the joys of being a parent. <laughs> That's what life's all about. You like children, don't you? Hmm. Very much. Always wanted some of my own. Just didn't happen. Well, there's still time. Oh, I couldn't bring myself to get married again. Not with the last one being such a disaster. You can't give up on life just because of one failure? No. It certainly makes you think twice. You wouldn't think twice if, if the right girl came along. 
Maybe she's been there all the time, only I've been too scared to face up to it. Good night. Good night. Bruce, come in. Morning. <laughs> Happy birthday for yesterday. In all the excitement, I forgot to give it to you. Oh, you shouldn't have. Oh, I uh, hope you like it. <laughs> what is this? Oh, oh, it's a beauty. Thank you. Uh, uh, how'd you go last night? Was uh, Gloria really playing up? Oh, a bit. But Adam had things under control by the time we got back. Ah. Uh, so uh, you had your own private party, eh? Oh, I left pretty well straight away. I drove down the beach, sat there for a while. Mm. Had a bit of thinking to do, eh? Oh, I may be old, but I'm not blind. You're a bit keen on Charmaine, aren't you? I don't know. In other words, uh, mind your own business, Rex. No, that, that's not what I meant at all. I just... Don't know how I feel about it. Poppycock, you're either keen on her or you're not. I am attracted to her. There you are, you see. You do know how you feel. Why don't you ask her out? What if things don't work out? I could end up hurting her. Could hurt her a lot more if you don't have the guts to do something about it. Take the advice of 66 years. Go on. What have you got to lose? Look who gave us a lift home. G'day, mate. Hi. Oh. You know what? I think I'll take Glory to the supermarket again until she gets over the phase she's gone through. <laughs> yes, I gather she had a ripping time with your money last night. Yeah, quite a comedian, eh? Oh, no, not that laugh. Here, have a go at this. There you are. Hey, Pete, would you uh, like a cuppa? No, I can't. I've got a few things I have to do. But I'm free this hour. Here's a, we take Gloria to the zoo. Oh, I can't. I'm working. Tomorrow, then. Well, I check my roster and I give you a call. Fine, I'm staying at the Royal Prince. Oh, you really have it the big time. <laughs> You're doing a good job there, kiddo. Give us a call, eh? Oh, I sure will. And Pete, thanks for the lift home. No probs. See you around, pal. Yeah. Well, why were you so rude to Pete? Was I? Yeah, just sitting there and grunting at him. And you were the same last night when he brought me home to change for the party. Well, I can't stand guys like that. Ah, oh, the three-piece suits and the company cars. Look, I bet he hasn't done a hard day's work in his life. Well, you'd lose your money. He's been a labourer, he's waited on tables, he's run a refuge, you name it, he's done it. That guy? Yeah, that guy. Pete's had to fight every inch of the way to get where he is today, and he's had to do it alone because he's had no family. Well, how was I to know? Well, you could have taken the trouble to find out. Well, what happened to his parents? He doesn't know. They dumped him with foster parents just after he was born. Oh, nice people, eh? Yeah. Well... Has he tried to trace them? Mm, plenty of times, but no luck. Poor guy. Well, I hope you've learnt your lesson. Don't judge a book by its cover. And next time you run into Pete, try and be a bit friendly, eh? Yeah, sure. You think these things were made of solid gold, the price they charge for them? I didn't know you played bowls. I don't. A friend talked me into having a bash at it. What friend? I better go and keep the peace. Come on, Artie. Uh, that's enough of that. What's the trouble? He won't practice with me. Why not? You asked Cheryl to be a partner, didn't you? Yeah. Then you can't disgrace her by making a bad showing at it. Why don't you start off with something easy? You can do the bun dance, can't you? Yeah. Well, let's have a look at it then. Peace offering. Thank you. You rest. Mind if I sit down? Help yourself? I'm, uh, well, I'm sorry about how I was earlier. No, oh, forget it, mate. Charmaine tells me you've been pushing it uphill to get where you are. I told you the story of my life, did you? Yeah. Well, sounds like you've had a pretty raw deal. No, I'm not complaining. I might not be where I am now if I'd had it easy. Knowing my parents didn't want me made me more determined to get somewhere. I don't know, just to show them. Too bad you can't front up and tell them what you've done in person. I haven't given up on that one yet, either. I've got one more lead, which I haven't followed up on yet. This little lady. Miss
Mrs. Ross. Lin Lindsay. But who's she? The widow of a guy I used to know, Senator Ross Lindsay. He knew who my parents were, and he's about to tell me when he was killed in a traffic accident. Mm, that's tough. Yeah. She left the country straight after he was killed. I wrote to her asking if she knew anything, but never replied. Anyway, I cut that out of the paper a couple of weeks ago. Apparently she's back in Canberra now. Well, that's not far. Why don't you drive up and see her? Yeah, well, I've been thinking about it. Well, I've never been to Canberra. What's her thrown for petrol and tag along? Listen, I haven't said I'm going yet. Well, you won't find out anything sitting around here. Yeah, well, what happens if I get there and it's a dead end? I mean, that is my last hope. Well, I reckon it's better to know. One way or the other. What the hell? Let's give it a go. Two, three, four. Back. Two, three, four, round two, three, four, forward two, three, four, back two, three, four, round two, three, Keep four. Keep up the good work. I'll be back by tea time. Oh, okay, Granddad. Bye-bye. Round two, three, four. I'm not doing any more practice. But we haven't done the Pride of Erin yet. Steph! If you do the Pride of Erin, I'll tell you a secret. Get lost. I know who your Granddad's going with. How do you know? I saw them together. Well, who is it? I'm not telling till he promises to practice. Oh, he promises, don't you, Artie? No. Who is it? Ow! Artie! Tell me! It's my grandma! Oh, you're fearing. I'm not! Ah! Uh, not! Ah! Uh, not! Stop uh, it, you two! Now, how do you know? Who do you think got me invited to the party last night? I don't believe you. She, he wanted her to come too, but she wouldn't. She said she'd seen my bowls today. What's your grandmother's first name? Dorothy. But she is telling the truth. It all fits. At least it's better than Granddad going with Miss Pringle. You reckon? I bet they'll get married. I'm not making any more bets with you, scaredy cat. Shut up! And when they do, I'll be moving in here. Won't that be nice? If you move in, I'm moving out! Oh, no, not more mess, Gloria. Oh. oh, it's open. Oh, well, you were the last person I was expecting. I uh, can't seem to keep away from the place. I've come to invite you to dinner. Oh, oh I'd love to. When? Day after tomorrow, my place. I'll even cook for you. Oh, well, I look forward to it. Who else will be there? We'll have the place to ourselves. That's why I chose the day after tomorrow. Okay? You know it is. <laughs> Stupid, isn't it? We're acting like embarrassed school kids. We both know what's going on. What, what do you expect? We're not friends anymore, and we're nothing else yet, are we? We'd better do something about that, then. At least I've stopped running. Yeah. Looks like you have. man again just for the meals even if it is only temporary don't say that you're not going back to jail the police will see through Maggie eventually we'll make them oh how without solid proof why don't the police start putting her through the hoops and get of your back well don't forget they've been handed evidence that points neatly to me too neatly any fool can see it's a frame-up if that's Maggie I'll scream and keep calm Hello, Claire. What do you want? Is that any way to speak to the woman who paid Neil's bail? Listen, Maggie, I offered... To... I know, I know, to pay me back, but I won't hear of it. I'm sure the bail people won't either. Can I have a word with Neil? I'll let her in. Hi. Don't set a place for me, darling. I'll just pick. Claire and I would like you to make it brief. Of course. I thought there was a little problem that perhaps you could clear up for me. Yes? Your punch-up with Gary at the Northern. What about it? Well, Claire and I discussed it the other day, but she never did tell me what it was all about. It 
It's none of your business. It's no state secret that I didn't like Gary. Darling, I don't like to speak ill of the dead, but who did? Don't look at me. No? It's funny enough. I have a strange feeling. On the one hand, a susceptible woman like Claire, and on the other, an attractive man like Gary. I can think of a natural conclusion. Did you have an affair? He was an animal. Just the thought of him touching me makes me sick. What have I said? Gary didn't force himself on you, did he? Oh, Claire, I'm sorry. I didn't mean I'll to upset you. cut it out, you. Maggie. Darling, it's better if she gets it off her chest. Nothing like that happened. Look, it's natural for a woman to blot out a dreadful experience like that. It didn't happen. Now, don't worry, Claire. I won't breathe a word of your awful experience to anyone. I know how I'd feel. Well, I think I got what I came for. Bye-bye. Oh, here's Bernie with you. Uh, he's outside looking at the mail. Good. I want a word with you on your own. It's about Neil Burgess. Yeah? Well, the headmasters had to suspend him from teaching, just until these charges are dropped. If they are... Well, they will be. But what I want you to do is knock any gossip on the head from the students about why Neil isn't in class. Well, I would anyway. Yes, of course. With any luck, he'll be reinstated and no damage done to his reputation. Then you two can get back to fighting as usual. Here's your partner in crime. <laughs> Mrs. Sunny, you've uh, you heard about our main business then? Yes, Kevin's been keeping me up to date. Yeah. Hey, it's a great looking machine, mate. Real vintage stuff. Yep. Uh, you got the local paper? No, why? Well, we'll see if anyone wants a lawn stuff. Haven't you two boys learned anything from working that milk run? Oh, go on. Think the booting, just because we're trying to make a go of something by I, ourselves. I'm not attacking you. Well, what's wrong with looking in the local rag for jobs then? Because you can't wait for customers to come to you. You've got to go out and drum up business. We just said and done. Look, stay for dinner. I'll give you a few tips. Yeah? Oh, all right, eh? Huh? I will now have to tear out and go visit Bryony again. Done. I just about went through the floor when Bruce told me. I reckon they did the right thing about keeping it under wraps. Made it easier on Kevin, I think. Look, once word's out properly, you'll have more visitors than you can shake a stick at. And if you're lucky, Artie and Cheryl might come in and give you a ballroom dancing exhibition. <laughs> <laughs> can't tell you how good it is to have someone smiling in here. Well, I can't tell you how good it is to be able to. Why are you so happy? Did you win the lottery? <laughs> Don't let Anne Hunter you say that. <laughs> No. Something's happened to make me feel so good about the future. Things are on the up and up for Gloria and me. That's good. Oh, sorry, love. I only opened my mouth to change feet. Oh, don't let me spoil your day. I can't expect everyone to pretend that children don't exist just on my account. No, oh, but I should have realised. No. I've got to face the facts. The baby's gone. I would have loved him or her, in spite of everything. I'd even picked out a, a girl's and boy's name. But I have to forget all that. I still have Kevin. And if anyone can make you happy, he can. Remember what Mrs. Hunter said, we've got to use initiative. Yeah, and, uh, <coughs> look confident. <laughs> I can't get over her being so keen, though. Yeah, neither could Bryony when I told her. She reckons we should be grateful for Mrs. Hunter wising us up. Sounds like you got a pep talk from Bryony, too. Yeah, once she got on the subject, she didn't want to talk about anything else. Hey, look. Our first customer? Well, it's worth a try. Good morning, man. Me and my friend are part of a new lawn mowing team in this area. Yeah? Yep. As a special introductory offer, we're prepared to mow your lawn for the cheapest rates in town. How much? Not bad. But hubby does the lawns once in a blue moon. Why not surprise him? He wouldn't notice. Well, isn't it worth a try? These prices, it wouldn't even make a dent in your housekeeping money. Persistent, aren't you? And efficient. And cheap. Mm. You've talked me into it. Come inside and have a cuppa. There's a fresh pot. Oh, great, thanks. Tell your mate he can start round the back. The grass is worse there. <clears throat> Neil, excuse me. Sam. 
truce. In the circumstances, that's the least I can do. No, that's my fault, sorry. I just came in this morning to uh, speak to my replacement and clear out the last of my things. Oh, but you'll be back. Wish I shared everyone else's confidence. Nobody thinks you're guilty. <laughs> Shame trials aren't conducted by Gallup poll. Surely the investigation is showing something to prove you're innocent. The police want a conviction and they look like getting one with me, so let's say the investigation has narrowed a little. How do you mean? Well, they think they're on the right track. So naturally, they're looking for evidence that supports their hunch rather than starts them off in a whole new direction. You should be pleased. Me? Well, you're home and hosed for that student advisor position. Now I'm out of the run. Oh, don't say that. The last thing I want is to take any advantage out of what you're going through. The last thing. I'd like to make an official statement in favour of Neil Burgess. Can I explain something first, Mrs. Edwards? Please do, Sergeant. I can call in my assistant and we can take a new statement from you. But unless it contains new factual material, there's no point. But I'd like to go on record as saying I'm behind Mr. Burgess all the way. Now, if it's purely a question of recording your opinion, I'd like to suggest that your willingness to stand bail carries more weight than any statement. Well, I'll be guided by you, of course. I'm sure you'll get a chance to speak on his behalf when the trial is heard. Well, of course, but you know how lawyers can twist the facts around. Mrs. Look, certainly Neil had a punch up with Gary, but who can blame him when that monster attacked Claire? But I, I won't waste your time. Did you say attacked? Well, of course, but if you only want new facts. You say attacked, Mrs. Moran. Well, you know what I mean. I think he was very brutal with her. Claire still gets upset when it's mentioned. Well, has she discussed it with you? Yes, last night. Well, do you know the time and place of the attack? No, but isn't it on your files somewhere? My files? The statements you took from Neil and Claire. Don't tell me they didn't mention it. A fairly significant omission, wouldn't you say? Oh, Lord, what have I said? Well, I think I've let the cat out of the bag. I don't think I should say any more. On the contrary, Mrs. Edwards. I'll be leaving you with my assistant to make a complete statement. Uh, where will you be? Paying Mrs. Moran a visit. I'll, uh... Be in in a sec. Sorry to do this to you, mate. Oh, yeah, I'll bet. Look, what's going on? Look, she's the niece of the woman from the last place. She rung her up and told her we were good news. The lawn doesn't even need catting. It makes it easy for you then, doesn't it? Don't you see, if she refers us to another house and it keeps on going like that, we'll make a mean. Yeah. And you'll have the world's biggest smile on your face. <laughs> Stick with it, old son. Thank you. I've just got up. Come in. I suppose you've got some more questions to ask. I'm afraid so. I doubt there's anything else I can tell you. I've been led to believe that there is. What? You'll make this a lot easier if you tell me. What do you mean? I'd like to make this as brief as possible, Mrs. Moran. And I can understand the subject may be difficult for you to discuss. But is our information that you were the victim of a sexual attack by Gary Fisher correct? Who told you that? Is it true? Maggie. Please answer the question. I have my rights, you know. A man is dead. Someone didn't care about his rights. You wouldn't be so eager to defend him if you'd known what he was like. I'm not defending him. I just want the truth. And believe me, Mrs. Moran, there's nothing more damaging to your situation than a refusal to cooperate. I don't see that it's relevant. All right, it's true. Gary attacked me. Now will you leave me alone? Thank you. But why didn't you report this attack to the police? Do you think a woman wants to subject herself to an interrogation after something like that? The law provides a form of redress. In theory. 
Unless you were thinking of taking the law into your own hands. Now, whose idea was it to conceal the attack, yours or Mr. Burgess's? We didn't plan it. But he knew about the attack. Think what you'd like. It's all a game to you, isn't it? I can't do my job unless people tell the truth. Now, I'll have to get fresh statements from both of you. Why, Neil? He's concealed the information from us as much as you have. Well, perhaps he was trying to keep suspicion from you, but... Or what? I can't discount the possibility he's trying to save his own neck. Which is just what Maggie wants you to think. Since we have a complete record of the interview, I'll leave it to you to come to the station to make a complete statement. And I suggest that if you see Mr. Burgess before we do, you ask him to tell the truth. And I have to ask both of you not to think about going anywhere. Quick, mate, into the car while I'm still in one piece. Why? What happened? No. And somehow we still got paid. <laughs> Lucky she didn't see the flower bed. Don't even mention beds. Oh, she didn't. Did she? Not from lack of trying. I tell you, this is an occupational hazard no one warned me about. Oh, gee, it sounds terrible. Hey, I tell you what, with you practically being a married man and everything, uh, you do the lawn mowing and I'll take all the hazards. It's a deal. <laughs> Never thought I'd have to thank Mrs. Hunter for this. It's good of you to come and have coffee with an unemployed teacher. I'm only sorry it took something like this to help us settle our differences. Well, it's always the way. Well, if I ever get off this... I... When you get off it. Well, when? Can you see any school wanting to employ me? Well, I'd certainly fight to keep you on the staff. The headmaster's very sympathetic. Yeah, and I keep telling myself the same thing, but it's... it just gets too hard trying to keep yourself cool and collected when you can see your whole life going down the drain. Yes, I know. It's made me realise that life is too short to go around feuding with people. Bernie tells me you're throwing your weight behind him and Kevin in their motor mowing business. I hope I haven't left my run too late to do the right thing by people. Neil, I want to... Excuse me. Neil. I'll yeah. just take Claire on the phone. And she's been looking for you everywhere. There's something wrong? Well, she said something about Maggie. Said if you could get over the Northern straight away. That's where she called from. Well, if you'd excuse me, I'll see you later. Makes you realise how lucky you are when you see the trouble other people have got. Claire, darling, good to see you doing the bars again. You're just in time for a little bon voyage drink. You couldn't wait to run to the police, could you? With the story of your dreadful ordeal? It was my finest art. Mr Mortimer was so attentive, I hardly had to say anything before he had the whole story out of me. Have you noticed how you always seem to know the right questions to ask? Uh, something with an umbrella in it, darling. Claire, how about you? Make it a bit of lemon. I don't think that Neil's going to have much of a show now. His jealousy is practically legendary. I think that anybody could put two and two together and work out that he killed Gary to revenge his assault on your honour. You won't get away with it. I'll tell the police you framed Neil to cover your own tracks. <laughs> You're saying I killed Gary now. My dear, you must drop down to the police station and tell them the latest. They'll have heard so many stories from you and Neil, they'll die laughing. Why are you determined to get at me? Settling a score. You had the satisfaction of seeing me hit rock bottom once. I swore my day would come, and it has. It's a pity I won't be around to see the outcome. What? I'm off overseas with Monty. You can't leave the country. It's Neil the police have charged, not me. I can do what I like. Monty's got a private plane waiting to take us to Melbourne. We've both got a few things to tie up, and then we're off on a jumbo to Singapore. Monty's insisted on staying at the raffles. You can't go. What are you going to do? Handcuff yourself to the wings of our Learjet. Not your style, there. No, well done. Keep the change. You drink that, sweetheart. It might make you feel better. She's trying to leave the country. Oh, calm down, we'll start at the beginning. Maggie told the police all about Gary attacking me. She's trying to set you up. She's handed on the perfect motive on a platter. Plus, she's made it look as though we've both been covering up. It looks as though she wants to make certain I take the rap. I told you that. It's about time I do what no one else has been game to do. I'm going to wring a confession out of her. She'll never admit it. No, I'll make her. She's gone to Melbourne, raved on about a private plane or something. It makes it harder to trace. She's still got a house there. I think so. 
I'll try and get her there. But what if she doesn't show? Oh, well, then I'll wait at the international terminal until she fronts, but I'll get her one way or the other. Well, maybe it's better to let the police go after her. Well, they haven't got the grounds to detain her, and they can't do what I will and make her talk. What will I tell Mortimer? He's after you for a statement on Gary's attack. He said neither of us to go anywhere. None of that will matter once I get the truth out of Maggie. Listen, ring Ansett and get me on the first flight to Melbourne. Be careful. Don't worry. It'll work out. Reservations. Hi. Thought they might brighten up the room a bit. Not very original, eh? Well, they're nice. <laughs> Where did you get them? Well, I could have got them out of the grass catcher. What? <laughs> Bernie had a bit of a praying with the mower. Oh, no. <laughs> Been thinking about you two all day out in the sun. I suppose you pushed. Well, Bernie's having a nap. I'll get the nurse to bring you a coffee. Oh, no. She's nice. She won't mind. Well, the truth is I've had more tea and coffee than I can stand. Housewife's hospitality. Oh, really? <laughs> Don't worry. I kept my distance. Did you uh, see the doctor today? Uh-huh. He says I'll be in here for three more weeks. Three? But Bruce had some good news. Hmm? He's sure that I shouldn't have any complications if I want to have another baby. <sighs> that is good news. Don't know how I ever thought I could leave you. Come on. We promised to forget all about that. I was only running because I was scared. No need to be scared anymore. Except about housewives chasing me around the hill's hoist. <laughs> Uh, there should be a ticket reserved in the name of Burgess. I don't understand why we've been transferred to a commercial flight. Oh, some dispute or other. The private chappies aren't flying. Why can't you do anything right, Monty? Well, look, I'll tell you, I'll go and check at the desk and see how long before we board. <laughs> look, um, uh, do me a favour and get me a drink, will you? We might as well get ourselves a good posse at the bar. Uh, the usual? Yes, please. Yeah. Something with an umbrella in it. Ah, you know me too well, darling. I feel like drinking up a storm. I'll join you in a moment. Detective Sergeant Mortimer, please. Yes, it is urgent. It's a question of someone absconding from bail. Thank you. Always. <laughs> well, now I've seen Canberra. You like it? Yeah, so far. Well, I'd better try and call Mrs. Lindsay. Well, do you reckon she'll be able to help you? No, she'll be able to help, all right. Whether she will. Like I said, send it to Lindsay, who was about to tell me who my mother was when he died. Mrs. Lindsay mightn't be too keen to dig up old dirt. You're up against it, aren't you? Yes. Still, it's not the first time. Yeah, hello. Can I speak to Mrs. Lindsay, please? Oh, I'm sorry. I can't tell you that. I would like to explain, but it is a very personal matter. No, mate, I'm not trying to sell anything. Look, I, I wouldn't be ringing if it wasn't a... Matter of life and death. They uh, weren't impressed, huh? No, no, not really. Still, worth a try. So, what are you going to do now? Front up, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but will they let you in? Oh, they'll let me in as soon as they see I'm not some kind of crackpot. Okay, so it's not going to be so easy. But I've got to try and see her. But she is the one person in the world who can tell me who my mother is. And that is something I want to know more than anything else. You want a cup of tea? No, thank you. Oh, you're not still mad about the party, are you? Yes, I am. Well, why can't we forget it ever happened? Because you deliberately humiliated me in front of Keith's friends. Not that you'd understand. Look, it beats me why you want to hang around with those creeps anyway. I mean, they're all snobs. Just because a person knows how to speak and dress well doesn't make him a snob. You're really up yourself, you know that.
Oh, hi. Come in. Oh, and you don't stay too long. Bernie! Don't worry, I won't be staying. Oh, that's the best news I've had all week. And neither will Julie. What do you mean? Well, I've talked to Dad about your accommodation problem. Oh, what? And he said if you wanted to, you could have an apartment in one of the blocks he owns. Oh, I'd love to, but I don't think I could afford it. <laughs> I'm the owner's son, remember? Anyway, he said if you wanted to, you could have it for the same price you're paying here. Really? A whole apartment to myself? Well, if you want it. Oh, I'd love it. When can we see it? Well, now, if you like. I thought you'd be happy to see me go. Oh, I am. I'll even pack for you if you like. Watch it, Bernie. Oh, don't worry about it, Keith. He's not worth it. Let's go and see the apartment. Oh, I've never lived in an apartment. I've only ever lived in flats. Yeah, it shows. Come on, let's go. <laughs> make a mistake. He's here as large as life. I paid the bail for him, darling. I should know what he looks like. That's him over there. Thank you, Mrs. Edwards. Just wait here, if you don't mind. Certainly. Mr. Neil Burgess. What's this? I'm sorry, sir. I have to inform you you're under arrest for attempting to abscond from bail. Claire? I thought you'd gone to Melbourne. So did I, but there's been a slight change of plan, thanks to Neil. He caught up with you? You could say it's more like I caught up with him. You see, Monty and I missed out on our private plane, a dispute with a pilot or something, so off we went to catch a commercial flight. But when we got to the terminal, who should we see buying a ticket but Neil? Well, naturally, I was shocked to think he was trying to skip bail, so I phoned the police to inform them. Any decent citizen would have done the same thing. Where is he? He's quite safe. He's in custody and all bail privileges have been revoked. No. To tell you the truth, it's worth forfeiting 5,000 bucks just to see you squirm. Forget the games, Maggie. I know you did it, even if I can't prove it. This whole thing has been quite distressing for you, hasn't it? Please, Maggie, just go away. All right, but I'll be in touch. Monty's gone ahead to Melbourne, but I've got to stick around for a few days to help the police with their inquiries. Not that I mind too much, because with Monty out of the way, I can really let my hair down. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Will you go? Look, I'll tell you what, I'm going to have a celebratory drink. Uh, would you care to join me? Oh, well, perhaps another time. Inside, sir. Yeah. Hey, you're not going to see Mrs. Lindsay dressed like that, are you? Why not? Well, you'll never get in, mate. Not if she lives in a place like some of the ones I've just seen. No, well, she does. <laughs> Relax, mate. I haven't gone off the deep end. I know what I'm doing. Well, then why the gear? Because I've already tried it the straight way. While you were out, I got all dressed up and just fronted. Didn't get past the gate. Oh, that's bad luck, eh? Not really. Mate, I've got two weeks holiday. I'm going to use them to meet Mrs. Lindsay. Now, one little knock back after all I've been through, nothing. So, what are you going to do? Tell a few lies. Hmm? <laughs> well, I mean, I've tried all the honest ways. Look how far it's got me. Now, yeah, mate, time for a little bit of Peter Beckett conning. Neil, what's happening? I took a risk, I backfired. But getting worried about it isn't, isn't going to do any good. I'm sorry. I should be doing something to help you. Hey, you are, just by being here. Did you tell the police the real reason you were going to Melbourne? If they know our suspicions about Maggie, they might investigate her. Oh, look, of course I have. Detective Mortimer made it pretty clear he thought it was just another story. They have to believe you. Why would they? On the one hand, they've got Neil Burgess apparently skipping bail by going to Melbourne. And on the other hand, they've got Maggie Edwards. So cooperative. And when she sees me at the airport, she immediately informs the police. And she's got an alibi for Gary's murder. We both know what that's worth. She probably bribed the room service girl to say she was in a suite all afternoon. Oh, look, Claire, that isn't going to do any good. I can understand how the police see it. I look as guilty as hell. But you're not. 
So my barrister can convince the jury of that. Oh, I can hardly wait to move in. Imagine me in an apartment with a view. Well, as soon as we get back from the weekend, you can. Are you sure it's all right with your father? I mean, it's an incredible favour to do for somebody you hardly know. Maybe, but he likes to see me happy. And I've told him how much you mean to me. So he really didn't have much choice. <laughs> That's blackmail. Oh, he's used to it. Is your mother as generous? She pretends not to be, but yeah, she is. <laughs> anyway, you'll get to meet her tonight. You can make up your own mind. You looking forward to the weekend? Mm. Are you kidding? I can hardly wait. All weekend lying on the beach. Your mother's lucky to have a beach house. I suppose she is. <laughs> but not half as lucky as I am to have met someone as beautiful as you. And as generous. And as warm. Keith, not here. Not yet either. It's okay. I've waited for you longer than I usually wait. I guess a bit longer won't do any harm. Julie, my, you're looking lovely. Hello, Maggie. And I suppose you must be Julie's young man. Well, she can certainly pick him. Aren't you going to introduce me? Uh, Maggie Edwards, Keith McCourt. Well, I'm delighted. You really are a lovely, lovely young man. You'd better hurry up and finish that drink. We've got to get to the beach house. Oh, are you going away? I was hoping to see you before I left Sydney. I'll only be gone for a couple of days. Oh, then I'll catch up with you when you get back. Well, actually, uh, I won't be moving back into the bank house. Oh, oh, and why is that? My father owns some apartments and Julie's moving into one of them. How nice. I've still got a pack. We'd really better go. Oh, darling, do you have to? I've got some news about Stephen. I'm sure you'd want to hear it. Oh, well, would you mind picking me up at the bakehouse? I've already packed, and if Maggie's got some important news for me. Sure. 45 minutes, OK? Yeah. It's a pleasure meeting you, Maggie. It was a pleasure for me, too, darling. Well, new apartments, beach houses, you're certainly doing well out of that one. What was it you wanted to tell me? Oh, yes, poor Stephen. He's up on a fraud charge. Things are not looking too good for him. Oh. Well, I don't know how you expect me to react. Quite honestly, uh... I couldn't even feel sorry for him, not after what he did. Good for you. Do you know something? I think you should thank me for splitting you and Stephen up. It sets you free to find yourself a bit of quality. Mind you, I must confess I'm surprised. You're always such a goody two-shoes. I'm over all that now. I suddenly realised that the more you put yourself out for people, the more they trample on you. <laughs> well, who'd have thought that you and I would turn out the same way? What do you mean? We both set ourselves up with a perfect meal ticket. Me with Monty, you with Keith. <laughs> Keith isn't a meal ticket. Oh, silly darling, of course he is. He's lined you up an apartment, hasn't he? Well, yes, he has. And that he's taking you away for a special weekend. And I bet you anything you like, you didn't buy that little number yourself. He's allowed to buy me presents, isn't he? And what little present are you going to give him in return? Oh, you don't understand, Maggie. <laughs> oh, I think I understand perfectly. You may not like to admit it, but when it's all boiled down, You'll know better than I am. <laughs> Are you sure you've got the right address? As far as I know, the cook didn't order any groceries yeah, This today. is the right address, mate. Groceries for Mrs. Lindsay. And I'm going to get paid for them, too. Well, I don't know. Well, the cook's off duty today. Oh, I can't hang around all day, mate. All right. You wait right here. I'll go and check with Mrs. Lindsay. Bernie, can I talk to you? What about? Lots of things. About me, about the way I've been... About you? Oh, that's a surprise. Well, I just heard Neil was caught at the airport trying to leave town. Now, I reckon Mrs Moran must be out of her brain with worry right now, so I don't give a damn about your problems. Oh, please, Bernie, I know I've been horrible lately, but honestly, I've woken up to myself. I'll change, you'll see. Hey, yeah. Uh, how come you got two checks? None of your business. Oh, I wondered how you had so much money to spend. You've been ripping off welfare checks, haven't you? They've both got my name on them. Yeah, but they're not both yours, but are they? Well, okay, it was a mistake, but I needed the money. You know something? 
You're about the lowest person I've ever met. You should never have left him alone. He could be a burglar, anyone. You'd better go upstairs and make sure he isn't there. What are you doing here? Who are you? Yeah, well, I'm not a burglar. I'm not exactly the delivery boy either. But Rodney said you were. Y yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I had to make something up. You see, I've tried to get to see you before, but, well, no one had let me. So I tried the old delivery boy routine. Got to talk to you. Look here, young man, I don't know who you are, but if you don't get out of here immediately, I shall call the police. No, no please, Mrs Lindsay, don't do that. All I want is a hearing. Why should I give you that? Because... You've got, or at least I think you've got some information that I need to know. Now, you are my last hope. How could I have any information to do with you? I don't even know you. Yeah, well, you've never met me. Look, if it helps, I knew your daughter, Alexandra. I used to work with her in a refuge in Sydney. It was a couple of years ago, but she may have mentioned me. Well, Mrs. Lindsay, you all right? No, no, I, I'm not all right. What's the matter? Can I help? You're the last person that could help me. I don't understand. You're Peter Beckett, aren't you? Ready? No. Well, you better get a move on. We've got a long drive ahead of us. I'm sorry, Keith, I'm not going. What do you mean? Like I said, I tried to ring you earlier, but you'd already left. You've left it a bit late, haven't you? Yeah, I know. I would have told you earlier, but I hadn't made up my mind then. Oh, now you have. Great. Do you mind telling me why the sudden change? Because I took a long, hard look at myself and I didn't like what I saw. I'm not with you. So, it's a cheque. It's not mine. Look, when my first doll cheque arrived, one like this came with it. They must have made some mistake. Anyway, I didn't do anything about it, I just cashed it. I pretended it was mine. Was well, that all you're worried about? Come on, Julie, everyone rips off the government. It's no big deal. It is to me. I'm giving the cheque back. Oh, don't be an idiot. That's just throwing money away. Somebody else's money. That's beside the point. Look, if you give the cheque back now, you're going to be in a hell of a lot of trouble when they find out you've already cashed one of them. My advice is to let it ride. It's funny. That's what I thought you'd say. I guess we have a different way of looking at life. Not from what I've seen. Well, maybe I haven't been honest, Keith. I thought I could be like you and your friends, but I can't. I've suddenly realised I don't like myself very much. I've hurt my friends a lot recently, and I want to make it up to them. Well, if that's the way you want it. Yeah. And I think we should forget about the apartment as well. Oh, well, suits me. I can always find someone else who wants it. I thought you could. Well, no point in hanging around here. I'll see you sometime. I can't answer your questions, so will you please just go? You knew my name. You must know something about me. Please! Mrs Lindsay, if you knew how important this was to me, I'm sure you'd help. I have been trying to find out who my mother was for so long. Now, before your husband was killed, he said he had some information about it. I didn't get to see him in time. He died before he could tell me. So if you know anything, anything at all, please tell me. I'll never bother you again. But I have just got to know the truth. My husband was going to tell you the truth? Have you any idea why? No. No, not really. My husband was going to tell you because... because he was your father. Now I understand why he tried to split me and Alexandra up. Yes. He went out of his way to make sure she took that overseas job. Didn't make sense then. Sure does now. Senator Lindsay, my father. Kind of hard to take in. I must warn you, 
If you think this information gives you any claim on the senator's estate, you're sorely mistaken. I shall deny the conversation ever took place. I don't give a damn about your money. I told you the truth why I came to see you. To find my mother. Then you're wasting your time. What do you mean you won't help me? I mean I can't. I never knew the identity of your mother. For obvious reasons, my husband ensured we never met. However, during the years, I did discover certain things about her. Yeah, well, anything, anything would help. Very well. As far as I can ascertain, your mother was a common slut. A woman who thought nothing of trying to wreck what was a very happy home. Because of your mother, I am what I am now. A useless cripple. Oh, I don't understand. My husband told me he was leaving me for her. We were at the top of the stairs. We quarreled and I fell. <laughs> a senator leaving his crippled wife wouldn't have impressed the voters very much. And I have endured all the loveless years since because of your mother. If you take my advice, you'll go home and forget all about your foolish quest because your mother is nothing but dirt. Filthy common dirt. Hi, Julie. I heard about Neil. I'm sorry, Claire. I thought maybe you might need someone to talk to. Really? Oh, I don't blame you for not believing me. I've, I've been so selfish lately. I guess it's asking a bit much to expect you to believe that I've changed. But for what it's worth, I have. I've broken off with Keith and, well, I'm going to do my best to make things up to my friends. What brought about this change? Maggie, believe it or not. She told me how I was living, that I was turning out just like her. I realised she was right. Well, I'll understand if you don't, but if there's anything you ever need from me, you only have to call. Julie, come here. Oh, I'm so sorry, Claire. I've been miserable. Well, one thing we've achieved out of this mess. I've got you back again. Hi, sorry I took so long. I got talking to this lady down the shop and she wants to know how she can stop her husband from snoring. Tell her to give him a clip over the ear. No, she's here. She can't sleep. Well, simple. All she's got to do is make him sleep on the couch. Huh. Yeah, eat this. Oops. Oh, yummy. There you go. <laughs> it's got mustard on it. Yeah, that's the only way to eat a hot dog. <coughs> The lashings of hot English mustard. It's burning my throat. Oh, you big sook. Mm. Are you doing anything this afternoon? No, why? Because one of my teachers just rang and asked me round later. I told him I'd bring you along. <coughs> so he throws these bashes every couple of months or so, so his penniless students won't starve. Half the faculty would be there. Uh, look, no, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot. I've got to go to work. But you said you weren't doing anything. I forgot, OK? He was really looking forward to meeting you. I gave you a big build-up. It's not my fault. Well, can't you do something to get some time off? No, eat your hot dog. I gotta go. I'll be late for work here. You finish mine, eh? Oh, hi! Hey. How come you're back so soon? Ah, uh, it's a long story. You got any coffee on? Oh, no, but I can put some on. Yeah, listen, mate, I've changed my mind. I think I'll just go back to the hotel. Oh, but you're not going to go without telling me what happened. Besides, I've got some news. Yeah? Yeah, Bruce got a telegram from Miss Mackenzie last night. She's uh, flying in today. No kidding. How long's she here for? For good. Apparently, Greg Denning's lined up a job back here and she's come on ahead to get things ready. Oh, well, where's she staying? At the Crown Hotel. Well, I'll have to look her up. Thanks again, mate, for putting up with me. Mm. I'll see you both before I go. You go where? Back to Perth. How come? Oh, you got some bad news from Mrs. Lindsay. I reckon the only way he can handle it is by keeping busy. So, he's going back to work. Well, what'd she tell him? Oh, that's sort of Pete's business, but she said some really rotten things about his mum, though. Well, did she say who his mum was? No, only that Senator Lindsay had been going around with her for a while. Oh, it's a pity he couldn't find out a name. And he could check her out and make up his own mind instead of taking Mrs. Lindsay's word for what she's like. Yeah, well, there's no chance of that. Mrs. Lindsay was his last lead. I guess that's it, then. Right. Yeah, 
Professor. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Oh, it's so good to be home. <laughs> I've been so homesick and I've missed you all so much. Well, we've missed you too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what beautiful flowers. Oh, <laughs> no, I know I'm home in Australia. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I wish I could take the credit. It was Charmaine's idea. Oh, bless her. How very thoughtful. I'll ring her tomorrow and thank her. Now, what if I ring down and order some lunch? Well, I really think you ought to get some rest. Oh, no, I'm far too excited to sleep. Jet lag or no jet lag. Please stay, unless you have any appointments. No, no, I give myself the morning off, just in case your plane was late. Right. <laughs> now, tell me, tell me about Peter staying at the, at the Royal Prince. I mean, what happened? Is there another gold rush in Western Australia, or did he just rob a bank? <laughs> It is a far, far better thing I do than I've ever done before. Hi, good news. You don't have to work today. The phone Mrs Moran asked for some time off and she said, you're not working today, you're working tomorrow. Oh. So, get out your glad rags, because you're going to meet Professor Botteril after all. And he's going to love you. He's just crazy about blondes. Even if they're done? I'm sorry, Michael. I can't go. All your brainy friends would laugh at me. Oh, Winnie, don't be stupid. It's true. I wouldn't be able to open my mouth without showing you up. Oh, what do you think we talk about? The theories of Freud and who painted the Mona Lisa? Oh, I don't know. But I can't risk it. I have to go alone. No. Look, I think you're pretty fantastic. And I can't wait to show you off to all my friends. I'm just saying that. No arguments. Look, if you don't go, neither will I. Now, come on, I really want you to go. Okay, if it means that much to you. <laughs> That's my girl. You're going to have the time of your life. So, Peter's done really well for himself. I'm so glad to hear that. I thought he'd have written to you and told you all about it. Oh, well, Peter isn't the world's greatest correspondent. Actually, I did know about the promotion. One page of trivia, at the end of which he said, uh, by the way, I've been promoted, regards Peter. <laughs> That'd be him. <laughs> Always seeking your approval, yet never being able to say so. No, it's very strange the way we've become so close. I mean, we were always at each other's throats when I taught him. Remember, I wouldn't even give him a reference. Mm. I'm sure it made him all the more determined to succeed, just to show you. Well, whatever his reasons are, I'm very, very proud of him. Well, I really must be going now. Now, make sure that you get some rest. Mm -hmm. um, before you go, what about the divorce? It's uh, going through. There's no hope of any reconciliation? None at all. Oh, Bruce, I'm so sorry. Oh, don't be. It was for the best. So, stop worrying about me and get some rest. Oh, um, what about having dinner with me tonight? I'm afraid I'm having dinner with uh, Charmaine. Oh, that's no problem. I'd love to see her. Bring her along. I think we'd better take a rain check on that, if you don't mind. We've just started seeing each other, and uh, we do need some time to be alone. You and Charmaine? Yes. I've known how she felt about me for some time. Up until the other night, I'd uh, been avoiding the issue. I've decided to stop avoiding it. It's serious, then? It could be. I see. You don't sound too thrilled. Oh, I'm, I'm just surprised, that's all. I didn't expect you to become involved again quite so soon. I didn't either. But I began to realise how lonely it can be when you've got no one. Bruce, sometimes we imagine we're in love because we're tired of being alone. It's not that way at all. Well, if that's the case, I, I couldn't be happier for you both. Oh. How do you like it? 
that you like it. What? My hair. Is there something wrong? Do you need glasses? Oh, I was just thinking of something else. Looks good. Oh, no, thanks a lot. <laughs> What's so interesting? Oh, I'm trying to line up a job in a sports store, but I'm not having much luck. How come? Well, they want guys with experience. And then you can't get experience if they don't give you a go. Exactly. Uh, it's open. Oh, oh well, I'm glad you're here. I'm having terrible trouble trying to make up my mind which dress to wear. See, first I thought of this one because I look like the others. Then I just fell in love with this one and now I don't know which one I'll wear. Well, there's no question about it. This one wins hands down. Are you sure? I mean, you don't think it's too uh, sexy? <laughs> I want to make a good impression. <laughs> Where are you going? Oh, this sort of party with Michael and there's going to be all them brainy tops in. I'm scared I won't have anything to say. Well, just be yourself and you'll knock them dead. Gee, I hope you're right. Got any old references you don't want? <laughs> oh, Peter. Charmaine told me you're in town. I had to drop in. Oh, I'm very glad you did. Come in, come in. Let me look at you. Oh, goodness. Is this the boy that used to get around with a seat hanging out of his jeans? Well, I've come a long way since then, thanks to you. Oh, no, I can't take the credit. You've done it all yourself. Yeah, well, I would argue that with you, but uh, I never could win an argument with you. Mm, not for the want of trying. It's a miracle that we've become so friendly after all the rows we've had. Would you like some coffee? I've got the makings. No, listen, I'm going to drink a gallon of the stuff on the flight back to Perth. Oh, you're not going away so soon. Right, so. But Bruce said that you're going to be here for two weeks' holiday. Yeah, I was, but uh, I cut it short and decided to go back to work. Don't tell me you've become a workaholic. No. No, I had a little bit of bad news, huh? Stupid enough to follow up a lead about my parents, and, well, I got a little bit more than what I bargained for. What do you mean? I found out that my mother was a real beaut. She was always out for herself and didn't really give a damn who got hurt along the way. Oh, Peter, I'm so sorry. Hey, well, I should have known the way she dumped me like that, eh? It was her loss. If she could see you now, she'd realise she had a son to be proud of. Who cares? I'm just sorry I wasted so much time trying to find her. Don't let it make you bitter. Put it out of your mind and, and get on with your life. That I intend to do. Listen, I've got to go. I've got a plan to catch. Take care of yourself, huh? Yes. You too. <laughs> I'll be fine. Don't you worry about me. And when you're in Perth, look us up. Look what I found waiting for me when I got back to the hotel. It's an old diary of my father's. Mrs. Lindsay sent it up. She reckons that it might help me find my mother. Well, that's terrific. Well, what's the point? I found out everything I wanted. I well, didn't find out her name. Look, maybe Mrs. Lindsay lied about her. Maybe that's why she sent this. She felt guilty or something. I hadn't thought of that. You've come this far, mate. You can't back out now. I might as well know the whole story. Can't be any worse than what I know already. Quiche, apricot pie, onion soup. Oh, damn. <clears throat> Hi. Hi. I'm not late, am I? No, no. <laughs> I'm the one who's running late. I've just got in, so I'm afraid it's panic stations at the moment. Well, so you could use a drink then. Well, that's supposed to be my line. <laughs> uh, what do you have? Oh, well, a gin and tonic would be lovely then. Coming right up. Well, I'll get the mixers. What do you have with yours? Um, just ice, thanks. Looks like you're out of tonic. Oh. Some host, aren't I? You pull me a glass like this. Good idea. Something different about you. Well, I thought I'd make an effort and have my hair done. Suits you. Thanks. 
Um, would you like me to set the table? Oh, no way. <laughs> no, tonight you're here to enjoy yourself. <laughs> Certainly not to work. I don't mind. I feel like a schoolgirl at a first dance. <laughs> Stupid. Well, you certainly don't look like a schoolgirl at a first dance. You look a knockout. Let's um, go inside and enjoy our drink. Whatever you say, Doc. Now listen to this. Be not expected to live. Can't bring the boy up myself without a scandal. Have to find someone who can bring him up as their own. Boss, so your mother died? No, no, where is it? And she got better, but by this time, he'd already placed me with foster parents through a nurse at the hospital. Now, he was too ashamed to tell my mother what he had done, so he lied to her and told her that I'd died. <sighs> Truth didn't come out till some years later. Where is it? Yeah, look. He tracked down the nurse only to find out that she'd died. He distraught and says she'll never forgive me. Yeah, but doesn't your dad know where you were? No. See, he gave the money to the nurse, told her to arrange it, and then paid her off to keep her mouth shut about it. <laughs> so if the press had got hold of that, he would have been finished in politics. Yeah, well, serve him right for doing that. Well, I guess he couldn't help himself. He fell in love, and when things went bad, he just, just couldn't handle it. Yeah, but... Look, if he was really in love, why didn't he divorce his wife and stick with your mum? Yeah, he did ask his wife for a divorce, but apparently they had a big row. She had an accident and was crippled. When my mother heard, she made my dad stay with her. Your mum sounds like quite a lady. Yeah. I'm glad I read this. At least I know now that Mrs Lindsay was lying and I've got a little bit to go on. Yeah. But doesn't he ever mention what her name is? Nope. Just her initial E and the fact that she lived in Sydney. He used to fly up and visit her about three days a fortnight. There must be some way to find her. Hang on. Yep. Miss McKenzie knew him. She might know something. Look, I don't want to be a wet blanket, mate, but wouldn't she have told you by now if she knew anything? <laughs> You're right. Uh, but she might be able to put me onto some of his friends. Well, I guess anything's worth a try. Mate, I have got nothing to lose. Do us a favour, will you? Cancel my flight. With pleasure. Yeah, I told the professor that you are responsible for me not giving up medicine. That's why I was so keen to meet you. I don't know what to say. Look. See, that's the clock tower. Mm -hmm. and, um, and there's the medical school. And there's the Great Hall. That's where you get your degrees. That's right. You're going to be sitting there watching me go up and get mine one of these days. I will? Yeah, you bet. No arguments. Because you're stuck with me whether you like it or not. Who's arguing? Always wanted to be a nurse when I grew up. But that lasted until I had my tonsils out and realised what the job was really like. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I thought all they did was hold patients' hands and look beautiful. Romantic novelists have got a lot to answer for. I'll say. But I gave up that idea in a hurry. I'm too self-tarted to make a good nurse. That's one of the things that's so appealing about you. I didn't hear that, did you? No. But unfortunately, they can see the lights from the street. Whoever it is will get short shrift from me. Hi, Doc. Kev Ran? Oh, no. Uh, he and uh, Bernie went to the movies. Damn. Oh, I need to borrow one of his tools. Well, look, uh, I'll give you the keys and you can uh, help yourself. Having problems with your bike? Yeah, nothing serious there. Uh, look, I uh, don't worry about it. I forgot you and Charmaine were. Uh, well, I mean, I wouldn't have barged in if I'd. Uh... <coughs> yeah, well, tell Cavella. Uh, see him tomorrow, eh? Seems the rumor about you and I has got around. Well, don't look at me. I didn't say anything to anyone. Did you? Only uh, Miss McKenzie. No. I didn't mean to, but I sort of painted myself into a corner. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Well, how did you feel about it? She was most concerned. Even put me through the third degree, make sure I wasn't...
trifling with your affections. Feel free. I hope I didn't get you out of bed. No, of course not, dear. I was just thinking about you. Come on in. I, uh, I remember there was something I wanted to ask you, but I thought you'd be on your way to Perth by now. Uh, yeah, we had a change of plans. Actually, I've got uh, something I want to ask you, too. Yes. Oh, ladies first. Oh. Well, I've been trying to puzzle out these figures, and I can't make them balance. It's a statement of account that you sent with the cheque for my share of the Beckham call. That's right. What's the problem? Well, I seem to have received $250 less than you did. I know there's some perfectly logical explanation. Are you accusing me of cheating? <laughs> no, of course not. I just want yeah, to Well, either so... you trust me or you don't. Peter, don't be so silly. I just want to get to the bottom of it. Oh, that's right. Put on the old school teacher tone. You should know that there is no way I'd try and do you down. You're being paranoid. I... All I want is an explanation for the discrepancy. You still had that chip on your shoulder, otherwise you'd see that. Oh, now it's my fault, is it? Oh, let's forget I even mentioned it. It's not worth worrying about. I'll make us some tea. Oh, don't make any for me. I'm not staying. I thought you wanted to ask me something. Oh, forget it. I wouldn't want you doing me any favours now. Peter! I said forget it. <laughs> just caught me. I couldn't leave without saying goodbye to an old mate. But you've only just arrived. Don't tell me. A new deal's come up and a successful businessman has to return immediately. No, no, not really. Then why aren't you staying the full two weeks? You said yourself you needed a holiday. Well, I saw Miss Mackenzie and, uh, well, we had a bit of a row. I don't know, mate. I just don't want to hang around anymore. What was it about? Money? Trust? It was about the sale of the beck and call. That she reckons I've diddled her out of some money. Now, how did she get that idea? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't hang around to be called a thief. I mean, you'd reckon after all this time, she would learn to trust me. But no. As far as she's concerned, I'm still that little kid she taught at school. I think you're being a bit hard on her. She has changed a no, lot. Not to me, she hasn't, mate. Are you sure that's not just the old Peter Beckett talking? Now, did you give her a chance to explain before you flew off the handle? No, because I know the way she thinks. Anyway, that's not the only disappointment I've had since I've been here. I'm just going to go back to where I'm wanted. To my job, my new friends, and no Miss McKenzie. Well, I think you're mad. You came here to have a holiday, see your friends. Now, why let an argument alter all that? <laughs> you're right, of course. Why let her spoil it? I'd just make sure I won't see her again. You're a nice bird, Tatters. Gee, you useless. Artie, come away from that bird and clean up this mess. Miss Mackenzie will be here any minute. Now, I don't want to think you live in a pigsty. I cleaned it up. Yeah. Not properly. You'll have to do it again. OK, in a minute. Now. And after that, you better go and wash your face and hands. We've got to go down and see Mr Merrick. Who's he? The tailor. He's organised the tuxedo for your ballroom dancing competition. He wants to get you fitting. I'm not going to wear it. Why not? Because I look silly. You look very smart. I don't want to look smart. I don't even want to go. Now, look here, young man. We've been through all this before. You're going, and you're going to be dressed properly. Now, go and clean up Am that I mess. Am I interrupting something? Miss McKenzie! Oh, my darling boy. Oh, I've missed you so much. Look at you. Hello, you must be Mr. Williams. Oh, please call me Rex. Thank you. Uh, it seems that my young man is still up to mischief. Uh, what do you have to get dressed properly for? Oh, uh, nothing. Just something at school. 
Come and I'll introduce you to Tatters. Well. Tatters, this is Miss Mackenzie. Hello. Isn't he great? Oh, yes. Does he talk? He used to, till Mr. Williams hit him with a tea towel. That's enough. Why don't you tell Miss Mackenzie about the ballroom dancing competition? I don't want to. Why not? Because it makes me think of Cheryl Harrison. I'll go and get out my pictures of Shag. You'll do nothing of the kind. I'm sure that Miss Mackenzie is not interested in pictures of a carpet snake. You are, aren't you? Did you take them? Mm-hmm. I'd love to see them. Beauty! Yes, Mum. No, everything's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm up half the night studying. Oh, Wendy keeps me at it. Yeah, she's a real slave driver, just like you. Oh, put her on if you like. Yeah, all right. Hang on. I'll just say hello. Come on. Hello. Oh, hi, Mrs. Lee. Yeah, I'm looking forward to meeting you. Oh, of course. I'll make sure he passes. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she is, isn't she? Oh, you won't have long to wait. I'm going to bring her up with me in the holidays. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. All right. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye, Mum. Are you sure that's a good idea, Michael? What? Meeting your parents. You just told my mother you were looking forward to it. That's only because I didn't have anything else to say. Don't you think it's a bit soon? Well, we've got to meet her sooner or later. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Do you think they'll like me? Yeah, of course they will. You'll love them. You know, it's a different world up there. The nearest neighbour's ten miles away, and it takes two hours just to drive into town. Gee, sounds a long way away. Yeah, it is. But it's beautiful. So, will you come with me? Well, if you're sure they'll like me. Oh, don't go on about it, dummy. Hey, look, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take some snaps of you. Then they can see what you look like. Go on, stand on, over there under the light. Uh-uh, I'm not having photos taken with me looking like this. Why, you look perfectly all right to These me. These are my old clothes, and if you're going to send any pictures of me to your mum and dad, I'm going to be dressed up. I don't want them to look posed. I want them to be natural. I'm not having any pictures taken really? until I'm changed. I won't be long. It's Bruce, Elizabeth. Hello, dear. You are coming to lunch. Is that an order? Of course. There's so much we haven't talked about. Very well, I'm in your hands. Give me ten minutes to freshen up and I'll wait downstairs in the foyer. Bye. You've done a good job there, Bernie. Oh, great. Thanks, Mr. Williamson. Last bloke we had didn't do the edges. They're just as important as cutting the lawn in my book. Yeah, well, agree with you there. I'm going to mention you to Dorothy Harrison. She needs someone reliable to do her place, too. So you should pick up another job there. Mm. Oh, never thought I'd see the day when I'd hear you give me a pat in the back. Oh, credit where it's due, son. I always thought you had it in you. I could tell the way you always kept Sarah un under your wing. Mark you, it didn't always seem that way. Uh, yeah. Mm. Ever since you've gone into this business with Kevin, I've noticed a difference. He's a steady sort of a bloke. Been a good influence on you. Well, things are going all right at the moment. Good to see. You think Artie's changed much? No, no, not much. I don't think he ever will. Mind you, he's come a long way since the early days. I'm pleased he's settled in so well with the Williams. Do you think he's happy? Yes. Why do you ask that? Well, I know how, how well he got on with Bill and Fran, but having met the grandfather this morning, I'm... I'm not so sure that he's got enough patience to deal with a young boy like Artie. Oh, no, you're wrong. Rex held that family together after the accident. He practically lived at the hospital until Artie was out of danger. No, he adores that boy as much as you do. Artie thinks the world of him. Mind you, sometimes the way they argue, you wouldn't think so. Oh, well, obviously, I was giving the wrong impression. Hmm, you were. No, Rex is one in a million. Hasn't been easy for him. He's had to take the place of both parents at a time when, really, he should have been sitting back and relaxing. Of course, um, Sarah's a big worry. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, the old problem of thinking she was too grown up to be told what to do. Rex sent her to a boarding school, hoping it would knock some of the rebel out of her. Things were all right there until uh, Bernie Harper interfered. Then, uh, that's another story. 
And another lunch. I think I've kept you from your patience for far too long. <laughs> oh, Wendy, will you try and relax? I am! You're not. You're so uptight. Look, why don't you lie on the floor? Hi, Michael. I want to be a proper picture sending your mum and dad so they can see I'm a nice girl. They know you're a nice girl. I've told them. Look, I just want to get some candid shots. If you won't take the sort of photo I want, then I won't let you take any at all. All right, well, where do you want to sit? Fee. All right. Okay, now smile. Great. All right, now don't move. I want to get another one from a different angle. Okay. Say cheese. Cheese! Okay, one more and that should do it. Last time. Smile! All right, you can relax now. Boy, I hate having me photo taken. Why? I always seem to blink at the wrong time or something. All the more reason why you should only have it taken when you don't know about it. Hey, look, let's do some crazy stuff. Fool around with some of that. You're not sending any of this to your mum and dad. No, we've done the official ones. Just pretend you're a doctor and you're going to examine me. <laughs> How's the old ticker, Bruce? Not good. Well, that's why I'm giving you these tablets to calm you down a bit. I'm afraid you're going to have to give up your cleaning job. What? Your blood pressure's still in a bad way. Now, that's because you're pushing yourself too hard. But, Bruce... Now, there's no buts about it. You've got to find yourself a non-physical job. How do I do that? Took me ages to find this one. Jobs aren't easy to come by at my age. I'm sure you'll find something in time. In time. Look, I'm your doctor. I wouldn't be doing my duty if I didn't give you the facts. I don't like telling you as much as you don't like hearing. All right. I'll go around and tell them at the school today. Good. By the way, how did you find Miss Mackenzie? Oh, I suppose she's all right. A bit hard to tell at one meeting. Some people take a while to get to know Miss Mackenzie's one of them. Just remember, she's done a lot for Artie. She was the one who saved him from going in a home. Really hurt her when she had to give him over to Bill and Fran's care. She didn't want to cut off, she just had to for the boy's sake. Would be nice if you did try to get to know. All right, I'll uh, ask around for a meal the next few days. Artie would like that. It'll have to be after Sarah's speech day and Artie's ballroom dancing exhibition, though. How's Artie's dancing coming along? Well, oh, pretty good by all accounts. It's not the dancing I'm worried about, it's the costume. All the boys are supposed to wear tuxedos. Artie's determined not to. He's already stacked on a few terms about it. But this afternoon, we've got to pick it up. There'll be another carry-on, no doubt about it. You'll handle it. But will my blood pressure? I like that one. No, that's not nearly as good as these ones. Look, these are much more natural. Just the thing to send to Mum and Dad. You're not sending them to your Mum and Dad. Yeah, why not? You promised. Ah, oh, but look at the difference. So you're too stiff. Anyway, you've got your eyes closed in two of them. Yeah, I suppose you're right. They're going to have to find out what I'm like sooner or later. Yeah. Hmm. You expecting visitors? No. Oh, hi. Hi, Michael. Can I come in? Yeah. I'm really glad I caught you both together. I've got a few things I want to tell you. Why? Is something wrong? <laughs> well, yes and no. I think it's about time I came clean with my friends. I'd rather you heard it from me. And if you don't want to know me, I'll understand. What's the matter, Julie? <sighs> well, number one, you're looking at a thief. It's lovely to see you again. Good to see you, too. And I... Oh, will you excuse me, yeah. Maureen? I don't want to have cake and ice cream at Mrs. Harrison's. Oh, dear. Well, then why don't I shut you an ice cream now? Terrific. I'll go see what flavours they've got. All right. How about some coffee? Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> if I have any more, it'll be coming out my ears. <laughs> I've just been catching up on old times with young Maureen. She used to work here when Peter Beckett and I owned the place. Oh, yes, she has mentioned you on the odd occasion. Uh, she also told me something about a rather troublesome neighbour you had. Oh, <laughs> yes, Mr. Baggett. That's him. 
Yes, Peter and I didn't agree on many things, but Mr. Baggett, well, need I say more? <laughs> Sounds a very difficult man. To put it mildly, <laughs> yes. Bruce was singing your praises this morning. Oh. <laughs> yes, he was telling me how wonderfully you held your family together after that terrible accident. And I can see that Artie is in good hands and I couldn't feel happier. His bond's a little kid. He certainly is. Mind you, it's a bit hard keeping him and Sarah in check. I'm not as young as I used to be. Well, you look pretty healthy to me. Mm. I've got troubles with my blood pressure. I've been thinking of getting some more help around the house. I've become pretty friendly with Dorothy Harris, and that's uh, little Cheryl's grandmother. And she said she wouldn't mind doing some ironing. Oh, that's a good idea. Mm. The only thing that's stopping me is the boy. He hates Cheryl so much. <laughs> It'd be one tantrum after another. Mind you, it would be nice having Dorothy around the place. Oh, I think you might be underestimating the boy just a little, Rex. Hmm? Oh, hello. What flavour have we got here? Chocolate. You'll have to excuse me. I've got to, I've got to pay the staff. All right, Rex. Tell me why you don't like the Harrison family. Because of Cheryl. Well, I think that's rather a silly attitude, don't you? Why? Artie... Your grandfather is a very lonely man, and Mrs. Harrison has made him feel a lot happier. But you're not helping things by, by behaving the way you are about Cheryl. And he's done a lot for you, and I think you should be grateful. I am. But I can't stand Cheryl. Yeah. Well, I thought that perhaps that you'd grown up quite a lot, but... No. Yeah. I can see that I was wrong. Before there's no answers, so the bullet just come round and makes it popped out for a moment. I went for a job interview. Oh, did you get it? Yeah. Well, I don't know that. I mean, what is it when you start? What are you doing? Well, it's on the other side of the city, and it's going to take me an hour and a half to get there every day. And I'm a member of a typing pool. I'll be typing invoices all day. Sounds awful. Well, at least it's a job, Wendy. After what I've done, I don't really deserve anything better. That's what I come round to see you about. See, after you left, Michael and me talked things over, and. We come to the conclusion that it took a lot of guts tying up to what you'd done. I still couldn't believe it myself. You made me such a nice girl, and nice girls don't go around pinching money. Anyway, you're trying to make up for what you've done, and if it means anything to you, we'd still like to be friends. Oh, Wendy. You don't know how important it is to me to hear you say that. When I finally woke up to myself, I realised that all the people I've been pushing away were the ones I really cared about. I'll let the tears fool you. She turns them on at the drop of a hat. Bernie! Can't you see she's upset? Anyone will be after what Julie's been through today. Oh, she told you, did she? Oh, well, I guess it's better than hearing it from me. Oh, Julie. Oh, he's right, Wendy. But I'm going to change. I promise. Hello? Is that you, Mrs. Harrison? It's out of here. I've just rung up to tell you I'm looking forward having cake and ice cream with you and Cheryl after the dance exhibition tomorrow. That's okay. Bye-bye. I'm sorry I said those things about Mrs. Harrison. She's a nice lady and she can't help if she's related to Cheryl. Apology accepted. Now, uh, you better go and hang this tux up in your room, otherwise it's liable to get creased. Oh, you better get some cream if you haven't strawberries. Oh, yeah. Uh, what about cheese? Is there any in the fridge? Not much. You better get some more. Hey, Charmaine's going to be really pleased when she gets home and finds out she doesn't have to cook tea. Oh, it's the least I can do. Look, I better get going before the shops close. Well, I'll cut the veggies. Are you sure he won't stay? Oh, no, thanks all the same. I've got to get home. OK, I won't be long. OK. I'm really mad at you, Bernie. You've got no right to treat Julie that way. Anyone would think you've never made a mistake in your life. Haven't you ever heard of forgive and forget? Yeah. Yeah, well, you of all people should know what it means. Or have you forgotten all the rotten things you've done to people like uh, slashing Marilyn's tyres or punching Jordan and attacking Neil? Oh, yeah. They're things you ought to be really proud of. Look, it's not the same. Why not? Well, well Julie and me are different. She's always had everything she wanted. She's had it easy. Not like me. Well, she ought to be able to be... I don't know... Better. 
the dumbest thing I ever heard. Julie is trying to make up for something she's done. And I reckon if you keep on being nasty to her, it'll be you that ends up without any friends, not her. Young lady, I'm inquiring about the position advertised in this morning's newspaper by your company. Of course, I'm sure I've got the right number. Please connect me with someone in a more responsible position. Eh? There's no need to take that tone with me. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Now, uh, where were we? She's hung up. She? Huh. Nobody does that to me. Don't worry, Mr. Williams. Your secret's safe with me. What secret? Whoever your girlfriend is. Look, I won't breathe a word. Girlfriend? I mean, if you're racing some Sheila off, that's your business. You young pup. I was talking to some dim-witted secretary about a new job. Well, what happened to your cleaning job at the school? Dr. Russell informed me earlier that it's too strenuous for me. Not that he'd know. Much. Look, you should treat it as a new challenge. I'm trying to do just that. But my age seems to be a problem. And I've got too much pride to be hanging on the phone talking to dimwits. Well, it's easier that way than fronting them in person. You know, I reckon I've been to every sports store in town looking for work. Did you try that little one in the mall I told you about? Uh, Tony Pangilli's a nice bloke. Yeah, but he's selling out. Oh, an agent was putting a sign on the window when I fronted. Oh, I suppose I can try the new owner. Uh, it takes months to sell a business. Yeah? Oh, there goes my last hope. And I blame you for it. For what? For giving me the idea in the first place. Oh, well, don't expect me to hold your hand. I've got enough problems of my own. Oh, so I was right about your girlfriend then? As a matter of fact, yes, you were right about my girlfriend. It shut you up, didn't it, eh? <laughs> I'm taking Mrs. Harrison bowling tomorrow. Oh, you're a fast worker, Mr. Williams. I didn't know you were a bowler. There's a lot of things you don't know about me, laddie. Oh, that's really romantic. I can see it now, midnight. You sneak up to Mrs. Harrison's window with the ladder. Down she comes with the suitcases. Then the two of you are off into I'm the... I'm going to cut these reading lessons out if it has this effect on your imagination. <laughs> Go and get the books. <laughs> Good cancelled lunch, you know. I would have understood. I haven't been much company, have I? You won't be doing Neil any favours by letting yourself be dragged down. I went to visit him yesterday in prison. He's keeping up a brave front, but I can tell he's almost given up hope. There has to be some way I can help him, Anne. What can you do? It's up to his solicitor now, isn't it? I have an appointment with Mr Maynard this afternoon. Mind if I join you? I'm waiting for a friend. He's a little late. I'm sorry, Anne. Claire. Maggie was a public-minded citizen who set the police on to Neil and had his bail cancelled. Out of self-protection, I can assure you, Anne. I was on my way to Melbourne, and so was Neil. A coincidence? Well, I wasn't prepared to take the chance of becoming his second victim. Neil didn't murder Gary, and you know it. Darling, your boyfriend hasn't got a chance. Why don't you cut your losses? If younger men are still your thing, I can introduce you to some pretty interesting possibilities. You're letting an innocent man go to jail for 20 years, and you don't give a damn, do you, Maggie? It's only somebody as despicable as you who could do that. Careful, Claire. Anne may be your friend, but she's also a witness. I think you're the killer, Maggie, and I'm going to prove it. And just how are you going to do that? Oh, why can't you leave her alone? Oh, give me credit, Anne. I'm being charitable. After what she just said to me, I could sue her for defamation of character. Excuse me, please. Look, I admit I've been waiting for a long time to get my own back on Claire. Her boyfriend did the job for me. I am more than satisfied. But if she continues to make stupid accusations, I'll take legal action with the greatest of pleasure. <laughs> well, am I getting any better at it? Doesn't feel like it. You're going through a slow patch. That's natural. Stick with it. Don't let me disturb you. You didn't. We're finished. Hold your horses, young lady. Aren't you going to tell us how the exam went? Well, we don't get the results for weeks. Oh, well, aware of that, but uh, you must have some idea how you went. Well, if you really want to know, it was a disaster. Well, it can't have been as bad as all that. Grindad, I couldn't even finish most of the questions. Well, I'm not going to blame you, Sarah, however it turns out. You've had a rough year. Any ground you've lost can be made up next year. Sure. As far as I'm concerned, you're not in any trouble. Now, uh, 
I've got dinner in the oven. I've got to go out for an hour or so. Got to meet Mrs. Harrison at the bowling club. Oh, I thought you went bowling until tomorrow. Oh, she's organizing some gear for me and I've got to buy a set of bowls. Who are, I suppose, but uh, it's rules. Yeah. Oh, my God. Roller skates. What's wrong with roller skates? What's the matter, Sarah? You look miserable. Don't worry, Wendy. She thinks she's failed her exams. I know I've failed. Grandad wants me to go back to school next year. So what's wrong with that? Makes sense to me. I don't want to go back. What's the use? If only Grandad wasn't so old-fashioned. Old-fashioned? You want to get your head straight, Sarah. Fair dinkum. I mean, you get spoon-fed all your life and you take so much for granted. Ask me. Ask me what it's like to be without an education. Yeah, well, it's different for you, No, Adam. it isn't. Now, if you want to chuck in school because you know where you're going and you don't need school to get there, fine. But if all you're doing is running away because it's a bit tough, well, you're making a big mistake. And who asked you for your opinion? No one. No one ever did. Do you want to have a go at me too? No, I'm on your side. Ah, I'll order in a moment, but just now I'd appreciate a long, cool glass of water. Can I uh, carry your bowling balls, mister? Enough of your lip, thank you. Well, I thought you were fit. Well, the bowling was no problem. But I think I aged ten years when Dorothy was trying to reverse out of the car park. Oh, thank you. Ah, that's the new go, is it? Bowling. What is that supposed to imply? Well, just that yesterday you were checking out the classifieds and here you are today, respectably retired. Retired? I'll have you know there's a big difference between a hobby and an occupation. Well, what are you going to do? I'm still thinking about it. Well, I'll leave it to you. I promise Charmaine that I'll zip over to the wholesalers and pick up an order for her. I'll see you, eh? Mm-hmm. Come on, Sarah! Wendy, m maybe we should just forget the whole idea. It's too late to back out now. I asked you what you wanted to be and you said a hairdresser. I said I thought I wanted to be a hairdresser. Well, do you or don't you? Yeah, I do. Well, what are you arguing about? Suppose Grandad doesn't like it. Of course he'll like it. He'll see how terrific you are and then you ask him if he can leave school to do it professionally. Well, what if he's in a bad mood? He's always in a very good mood after he's been out with Mrs. Harrison and you know that. Now get on with it. Wendy? What now? I'm nervous. Suppose I mess it up. You're not cutting my hair. You're just giving me a permanent wave. You've done that before. Yeah, but not with this brand, I haven't. Just read the instructions on the label and hurry up. What, you're still here? There a law against it? No, it's just that I thought you'd be at home having a nap after all that exercise. Sit down. Do you know you can't play this game unless you've got all the proper gear? Yeah, well, everybody knows that. You know how much it costs? A small fortune. Got on the wick a bit. Until I put myself in the bloke's place. Well, whose place? The bloke who runs the sports store. He made a small fortune. Do you get me drift? No. You're not thinking, Adam. It occurred to me that a sports store could be a very good business to run. A small one, like the one for sale in the mall. So I checked on the price. Well, it probably cost a bit. No bargain. But I could manage the price, uh, if I mortgage the house. Uh, uh, but I don't know. But it's a good business, Mr. Williams. I mean, the only reason he's selling out is because he wants to retire. Mm, a lot of heavy work involved, crating, unpacking. I don't think I could manage by myself. Well, hire an assistant. Mm, I thought of that too, but I can't think of anybody I'd want. Listen, if you think that I'm going to call to you for a job, you can stick it. <laughs> don't get your dander up. It's only having some fun with you. Of course the job's yours. You're the reason I thought of a sports store in the first place. Oh, hang on. You. Well, you're not just doing this for me. Can't be ridiculous. It's a business to keep me occupied and make a profit, and there's a job in it for you. So we're all happy. You're quite a guy, Mr. Williams. Guy is American. I'm a good bloke. 
<laughs> you know what I think's sad? It's Peter Beckett and Miss Mackenzie. Now, they've always been so close, that's what Dr. Russell says, although they never admit it, and they never even talk to each other, and they haven't seen each other for so long, and they're still not talking to each other. Although, mind you, from what I've heard, they've always been like that. Sarah, are you listening to me? Yeah, it's, it's finished. Oh, good! Show me the mirror. For yourself. What am I gonna do? Never mind you. What am I gonna do? Well, I told you I was worried. Well, look, it's okay. I'm not blaming you. Granddad will be home any minute. What's he gonna say when he looks at your hair? What on earth? What have you girls been up to? Uh, well, will you see, Mr. Williams? It's my fault, Granddad. You see, I tried to fix Wendy's hair and it all went wrong. I'd never have guessed. I'm sorry, Granddad. See, you don't know the full story, Mr. Williams. I, I, I talk Sarah, we know it. You're as bad as one another. See, Sarah wants to prove to you that she doesn't have to go back to school next year. Doesn't have to go back. Sarah wants to be a hairdresser and she's good at it. Well, most of the time. But she wanted to prove that she could handle it. You see, and uh, I did talk her into it, honest. Go and get some clothes on. Get yourself to a decent hairdresser and get that straightened. I'll pay for it. Oh, Mr. Williams, Just do it. Wendy, I hadn't considered the thought of Sarah leaving school early and I don't like it. Don't interfere from now on. Thanks for agreeing to see me. Oh, I must say I was rather surprised when Mr. Maynard telephoned me. <sighs> well, you're Claire's friend. I need your help. Well, go on. Well, I saw Claire yesterday afternoon. She spoke to Jack Maynard two hours ago. We're both concerned she isn't handling things too well. Yes, well, I had lunch with her, and I must say I agree with you. Why? What did she say? Well, it doesn't matter. Just say that you made the point, and I agree with it. Oh, you're not getting away with that, Anne. You've got to tell me. Well, we ran into Maggie, who provoked Claire into making accusations. I'm sure you get the picture. Accusations? Or well, that Maggie was the killer? Yes. What do you think? No unfair question. Considering the evidence, you'll probably think I did it. I didn't say that. Well, I didn't ask you here for sympathy, Anne. That's for Claire. She needs a friend. Maggie's obviously determined to drive her until she snaps. I'm asking you to look after her. Well, I can't, Neil. I've promised Robin that I'll join her in Adelaide, and I can't go back on that. No. I'll see what I can do until I go. Sorry, I can't promise anything more than that. No, it's more than I have the right to expect. Thank you. Neil, just for the record, I don't think you're guilty. Come in, come in. Oh, you haven't changed your mind, have you? Of course I haven't changed my mind. Well, then what's wrong? Uh, problems with Sarah. Sit down, I'll tell you about the sports store. Sarah's okay, isn't she? She tried to convince me she could be a hairdresser. She turned Wendy into a haystack. <laughs> you can laugh. I'm the one who's got to pay for the damage. Oh, I can't understand it. I saw her do Julie's hair over at the bakehouse. Look good. Don't you start. I had my heart set on that girl finishing her education. No one agrees with you more than I do, Mr. Williams. I mean, the question is, what's education? If Sarah's going to be a hairdresser one day, well, she's the right age to be apprentice, right? She's still got a year of school, school to do. School takes all shapes. Now, the reading lessons you've been giving me, same thing. It's all there to prepare you for life. 
That's what you told me. Are you trying to tell me another year of school won't do Sarah any good? Well, perhaps. Perhaps not. Hmm. I'll go and get those figures. You don't know me. My name is Claire Moran. I wonder if I could come over and ask you a few questions regarding Gary Fisher. N no, n no, I'm not a journalist. I have a personal interest in the case. Yes, I, I realise you've told the police everything you know, but you live next door to Gary. You must have seen something that afternoon. No, please don't. What do you want? I'm worried about you, Claire, and I've come to help. Get out. Temper, temper. You don't have too many friends at the moment, darling. The ones you've got, you should be more appreciative of. I'll find the evidence against you, Maggie. I don't care how long it takes. My, my, big words. I just popped in to give you a little courage. You look as if you could use it. Get out. <laughs> Hungry? Yes, thanks. So, you're speaking to me this morning. I wasn't sulking, Grandad. Just feeling sorry for yourself, huh? Well, you can stop that. Wendy's hair's turned out all right, so no one needs to feel guilty. It's time you and I understood one another. You know how much your mum and dad want you to finish school. Look, Grandad, I'll continue school next year. I'm sorry I made so much trouble about it. Hold your horses. You've got to give me a bit of leeway, too. It's not easy for an old codger like me to bring up a young lady. Decisions aren't easy. So I'm prepared to make a deal with you. You've got the whole summer ahead of you. That's plenty of time for you to find an apprenticeship in a salon. If you can find one and keep it, then it's all right with me. Oh, Granddad! <laughs> if it doesn't work out, mind, you go back and finish school. It's a deal. I'm not so bad when I say yes, am I? Oh, I love you even when you are grumpy. <laughs> it was my fault, you see. I was trying to prove to Mr. Williams how clever Sarah was. Thank you. <laughs> Lucky she doesn't want to be a vet. Why? Well, imagine what you two would have done to the poor flaming parrot. Hey, Adam, can I use your phone to call Mrs. Moran? Sure. Thanks. She told me to ring her this morning so I can find out when I'm working next. Hey! Mr. Williams gonna buy that sports store for sure? Yeah, well, he's seeing his bank manager this morning. It's gonna be a new start for both of us. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. What's funny about it? No, no, not you, Mrs. Moran. She's not answering. What do you want? You look dreadful. Just go away and leave me alone, please. Well, not until you've called Bruce Russell. Satisfied? A gift from Maggie. After all the trouble you went to give this stuff away, and you just let her win so easily? Neil wouldn't be in that jail if it wasn't for me. And Maggie's right. There's nothing I can do about it. Claire, look, don't give up. Sweetie. What's it matter? What does anything matter? Claire, I think I can save Neil. I, I know who really killed Gary Fisher. Oh, God forgive me, I've known all along. You have to tell me. I killed him. Oh, my God. He, he said he was going to hurt Robbie. I, 
just hated him because I saw the knife there and I, and I killed him. But don't you understand? He said he was going to hurt Robbie. You let Neil take the blame. Well, I had to. You hypocrite. You even went to visit him in jail. I didn't know they were going to blame him. You didn't try and stop them. But I thought you were my friend. Please, please believe me. I thought they'd let him go. I... Oh, God. What am I going to do? I didn't know the hospital wanted its lawns mowed. Ha uh ha. -huh. Don't tell me you're here to visit. I spent three bucks on these chocolates, didn't I? You've got to be the most handsome person I've seen all day. But since I've only seen Matron, that doesn't mean much. I'll ignore that. I'm in a good mood and I'm going to stay that way. Why is that? I finished my exams, didn't I? I reckon I did pretty good too. And after tomorrow, no more school. I wish I could be there tomorrow. What for? It's only speech day, dolls bill. Maybe for you, but I'm sentimental. I want to say goodbye to my friends. Oh, well. It's not as if I'm leaving school altogether. I've still got my deferred exams to do. You're not missing a thing. Anyway, you promised Bruce you'd be a good patient, and that means staying here. Yes, boss. Anyway, if you're so sentimental, how come you've forgotten what day it is? I haven't forgotten. How could I? We're going to be married today. It'll still happen. Whenever I get out of here, whenever that'll be. Won't be long. It'll seem like forever. You should complain. You got it easy. How'd you like to be pushing around a lawnmower all day? I'd give anything to be down the beach. I love you. Oh, well. At least you got good taste. <laughs> what can I say? It's just no excuse for what I've done. Did you hide the knife behind Neil's locker? When I left Gary's, I went straight to the school. and I couldn't think straight. I didn't know what I was doing. Why did you hide it behind his locker? I just panicked. I heard someone coming and I put it in the first place I could find. You expect me to believe you didn't know it was Neil's locker? Well, yes, it, it was just bad luck. I intended to move that knife as soon as I could, but they found it before I had a chance. When the police charged, Neil, you still didn't come forward. I didn't have the courage to. So why now? Why come here now and suddenly tell the truth? It was all those things you were saying about Maggie yesterday. You should have been saying them about me. I've had to live with what I've done. I had to live with it and... But I'm still doing it. And then when I came here and I saw that you'd been drinking, well, I just had to do something. I see. In a way, I'm glad it's all over. We'll have to call the police. Yes. Would you like me to? Yes. C could you tell them I'm at the house? There's something I've got to do first. Of course. My darling Robbie. There's no easy way for me to tell you this. You'll hear in the next few days that I've been charged with Gary Fisher's murder. There's nothing I can say, except I love you, and I'll always love you. I hope you can find it within yourself to eventually forgive me for what I've done. All my love. Hunter? Yes. I've been expecting you. I'll give you 
give us a hand, will you? Hey, not a bad set of wheels. Yeah. You should be thinking about getting a car. With what? I'm skint. We could be getting some money soon, especially if the business takes off. Oh, come off it. I'd have to do bulk loans to get a pub cap, let alone a deposit. Oh, we are in a good mood, aren't we? No, I'm sorry. I reckon you're pretty lucky. I mean, well, you've got a car, you've got a chick. Yeah, I went to see Bryony this morning. You know, if she hadn't been hurt, we'd be getting married today. Yeah? Yeah. Gee, she must be, well, feeling pretty rotten. You know, lying in that hospital bed thinking about it. I just thought... Nah, it's stupid. What? I forget it. Hey, look, come on, I'm not going to spend the whole day working with you if you're sweating on a silly idea. What is it? Well, who says it can't be today? The wedding, I mean. What? Why not? What's stopping us? Hey, come on, she's sick. She's in the hospital. So what? We'll get married in there. Anyway, look, who's going to do these jobs we've lined up? Well, you can handle this one for me. A lot to organise. Oh. Yeah. Hey, uh, hang on a minute. I'll be back, okay? Hey, Kevin! It was made the two of you to do the one. Oh, yeah, well, that's right, but, um, well, I'm twice as fast and twice as sufficient. Neil! Hi. Oh. Oh. I didn't realise they let you out so soon. I was on my way over. Oh, once they had Anne's confession, it was all they needed. Even brought me around a police car, special delivery. <laughs> These past two weeks, I don't know how you've coped. How I've coped? You've been under just as much strain. It's over now. I don't want to talk about it. You know, sitting in a jail cell's made me realise how quickly you can lose the things in life that are important. I love you. Look, maybe this is a bit soon, but I want you to move in with me. We'll make the bakehouse our home. You didn't want me to live with you before. What's changed? Well, maybe I've grown up. Maybe I've come to realise how much I need you. When I was in prison, knowing you cared was the only thing that kept me going. Well, what more can I say? I, I love you. It doesn't work that way. Before you went away on the hiking trip, we argued. I broke things off then. I haven't changed my mind. But during all this... I was helping a friend in a crisis, that's all. You don't need me anymore. I want to make a clean break, Neil. I mean it. Hold a minute. You've got ten seconds, so it better be good. That's good, all right. I'm going to marry Bryony. Today. <laughs> Today? Yeah, well, before she was run down, we had it all planned. Well, so what's the big difference now? All it means is we get married in the hospital. Well, just hold the phone. You know it's not that easy. Well, does Bryony not? I don't want her to. It's a surprise. <laughs> It'll be a surprise, all right, that's for sure. OK, well, where do I fit in? Well, I'll need you to help organise everything. Fair enough. Well, what do you want done? Well, I'll try and organise a minister. That could take a while. But I figured Brian would like to get dressed up a bit. So, could you go out and buy a really nice nighty? I'll give you the money. Well, sure. Oh, pretty one. White lace, that sort of thing. Yeah, great. <laughs> well, you're going to need more than a minister. You're going to need a witness. Oh, what am I talking about? You're looking at one. <laughs> Another vodka and orange, please. A little early for that, isn't it? I haven't the strength for you today, Maggie. Go and waste somebody else's time. I know you're not going to believe it, but I hate to see a reformed alcoholic fall off the wagon. It really does distress me. I didn't fall off the wagon, Maggie. I was pushed. No, dear, I think the alcohol must be addling your brain. You have been under enormous pressure. That's what's caused it. And how's Neil? Is he still enjoying the prison? Isn't that a curious thing? 
I would have thought you'd be one of the first people to know. Neil isn't in prison. He's been released. Released? And Hunter murdered Gary. The police have a full confession. Is that a fact? Well, well, I've always said it takes all kinds. I'm very pleased that you and Neil will be reunited. The three of you should be very happy. You, Neil, and the bottle. If you think this is going to break us up, Maggie, you're too late. Neil and I have separated. <laughs> well, in that case, I am more than pleased. Without someone to prop you up, you should drink your life away in next to no time. I must say, I enjoyed watching you squirm when you thought I'd kill Gary. It must have been very galling for you to be so certain and not be able to do anything about it. You didn't do anything to discourage me. Why should I? The two of you played into my hands. The only thing I've been up to since I've been in Sydney is a little hanky-panky with a very nice surfer type. Sweet young man. Whilst Anne was killing Gary, I was having a wonderful time. But it wouldn't have done for Monty to find out, though. And that is why I had to fake an alibi. I may be drinking again, Maggie. But I still have the right to choose the company I keep. Oh, I'm sorry you feel that way, Claire. I was hoping we could become friends. <laughs> Could you use a visit from a friend? I sure could. Well, I'm glad you said that, because I got a present for you. A present? Oh, it's beautiful, Charmaine. You gonna try it on? Not now, later. Okay. What's bugging you? Nothing. Oh, nothing, my eye. You look like someone who's just had a tooth pulled. What's your problem? It's this place. I know I should be grateful for everything, but I, I can't help feeling I'm going to be stuck in here forever. Well, you know that's not true. You're going to be out in a couple of weeks. Or a month. Or two months. So? You're going to get out healthy, aren't you? That's the main thing. It's Kevin. I'm worried he won't wait for me. I'm no good to him in here. But he loves you, doesn't he? That won't last forever. It's not fair on him. Listen, now, <clears throat> I don't usually give out advice that's not asked for, but I'm going to make an exception. Don't sell Kev short. He'll wait. And I'll let you in on a tip. You've got nothing to worry about. Has he said something? No. It's just that I'm going by instinct, that's all. But I tell you what, you stop belly aching about how rough life's been treating you. You start thinking about what it'll be like to be Mrs. Kevin Ryan. Because it'll happen so fast you won't even know what hit you. You think so? I just told you so, didn't I? <laughs> okay, let's get into this. And all I get is good. Sorry, mate. Got a problem, that's all. Couldn't find a minister. Well, I thought there'd be heaps of them around. Oh, not at such short notice. They're not anyone anyway straight away. Well, what are you going to do? I'll have to call it off. One good thing is, Brian, he doesn't know about it. I asked Charmaine to keep it a secret. Oh, jeez, I'm sorry, mate. One of those things. Well, I'll help you pack up and then uh, go to the hospital. No, look, don't worry, I'll handle it. Sure? Yeah, yeah, I'll do the next place. Thanks, mate. I've done a fine job of the garden. Uh, Kevin? You're a... Uh... Something the matter? Uh, no, no, everything's fine. Right. Are, are you busy this afternoon? Not too much later, why? <laughs> oh, you little ripper. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, twice. Mm. <laughs> now, look. You two behave yourselves. I've just seen an old friend, and I'm going to have a chat to him. Keep proceeding, mate. Sure. <laughs> Neil, Neil, what can I say? Goodbye wouldn't be a bad start. I'm being serious, darling. Oh, I get it. You're still cranky about the police stopping you at the airport. I had to make the call. What else can I do? If you'd absconded, I would have forfeited all my bail money. 
Oh, don't take it so personally. <laughs> you know, frankly, I have always found you rather cute. Your taste in lady friends is appalling, but that's beside the point. Look, I've only one thing to say to you, lady, and that is go away. And where exactly is away? Back to those morons. They're boring. And with Monty and Melbourne for a few days, that leaves you and me. It's fate, especially now that Claire's out of the way. Who told you that? News travels fast. Anyway, I wouldn't have to be Einstein to work out that you wouldn't want an alcoholic hanging around your neck. <laughs> Claire hasn't touched a drop in months. You naive little thing. Oh, don't tell me she hasn't told you. When you were in prison, the poor love just snapped. She had to have a drink. It explains it. Whether you like it or not, Maggie, you've just done me one hell of a favour. I couldn't understand why Claire wanted to call it off. Now I do. Don't tell me you're going back to her. That's exactly what I'm doing. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, bad Tom, where have you been? Long story, I couldn't get anyone to do the service. Oh, great. That's all right, Bernie found a guy. Uh, they'll be here any second. How is she? Oh, okay, but I tell you, it's the hardest secret I've ever had to get in my life. Oh, so she doesn't know, great. Um, did you get the nighty? Oh, yeah, it's really pretty. I think she'll like oh, it. Terrific. Yeah. Oh, terrific. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Mr. McGregor, this is Charmaine Weston. Oh, good day. I'm glad you could make it on such short notice. I must admit, it's under unusual circumstances. Yeah, it's going to make a sick girl really happy. <laughs> Let's hope so. Ah, uh, look, right, we've got everything we need. Yeah, flowers. Yeah. Um, something new. The nighty. Yeah, right. uh, something borrowed. Doesn't that come next? Uh, nothing. I think we'll have to figure that out later. Mm. Well, the flowers are blue. And something old and something borrowed. And the ring. Oh, truth. Oh, How can we forget a ring? A ring? Where am I going to get a ring from? Oh. It's no problem. I've got an idea. You can use this. Oh. Something old, something borrowed. Thanks. So then, we're all set. Okay, Tiger. In you go. <sighs> I didn't think you were coming in till later. Thought I'd surprise you. Got your new clothes on. Weren't you supposed to be working this morning? Change of plan. Thought I'd try something different today. What do you mean, something different? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll get married. That's if the prettiest girl in the world doesn't mind. Mary. Marry me today. That's if you're not doing anything else. The minister's waiting outside to come in. Oh, Kevin. <laughs> I told you we're through. Oh, Claire, what are you doing to yourself? What does it look like? I'm an alcoholic and I'm drinking again. Satisfied? Oh, Claire, don't! Mm. I like drinking. It's something I like to do. Why didn't you tell me I can help you? I don't want your help. I don't want pity. Please go away. You can do anything you like, but I'm not going away until you realise that I love you and that I can help you. You don't know what it's like living with an alcoholic. Ask my son what he went through. Yes, but he did it because he loved you. You'd end up hating me. Maybe. Maybe that's just possible, but neither of us will ever know until we at least try. You can love me like this. I can love you no matter what's happened or what you've done. The important thing is that we try. The ring, please. With the exchanging of the vows and the giving of the ring, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. Yes, I will. Bye. It's okay? It's okay. <laughs> They're a bit stunned at first, but Dad wants you to know he couldn't have asked for a nicer daughter-in-law. 
and into the bargain. He's insisted that when you're well enough, we go down to Canberra to see them and have our honeymoon. A honeymoon with your parents? <laughs> no, just pass through there. But he wants to pay for the trip. Oh, that's really nice of them. You know, I always used to think of getting married in style. Church, lots of people, you know, the usual thing. But getting married the way we did, well, it sort of made it more romantic. Does that make sense? <laughs> well, it's just us. That's the way it's going to be for a long time. Us and the kids. We need a house first. Don't worry, I've got everything worked out. I reckon within 12 months, me and Bernie will have the lawn mowing business pulling in four, five hundred dollars a week each. And that's without specials like landscaping and stuff like that. I love you, Kevin Ryan. And I love you, Mrs. Ryan. I couldn't help giggling when Charmaine caught my bouquet. <laughs> she looked so embarrassed. Yeah, especially when I said she'd be next cab off the rank. <laughs> Wendy's gone to bed early, Grandad. Yes, well, the poor girl was very upset. Oh, not another one. I might have known someone's left the front door open again. Where's Artie? Here I am. Hello, Miss McKenzie's taxi come. Oh, hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Rex. <laughs> How are you? Uh, well. Make sure you close the door. Oh, OK. Hello, Sarah, dear. Hi, Miss McKenzie. Well, then, doesn't our young man look handsome? <laughs> Do I really have to wear this stupid tie? It looks very smart. Why couldn't you show Harrison wear it instead? Oh, because she's a girl. I mean, would you wear a dress? Oh, you're having a go at me, Miss Mac. <laughs> you can tell the hot weather's here, these blessed flies. One thing I cannot stand. Now, come on, everybody. I want to take a photo. Okay. Artie, go and get your hat. Oh, right. Well, I'm delighted to be going to the uh, dance exhibition. Are you coming to speech day tomorrow? Indeed, I am. I'm very privileged to be guest of honour. Oh, that's great. Yes. Did you go to the school, Miss Mackenzie? No, darling, no, but I, I taught there for a very long time. My word, what a splendid hat. I'll get the blessed thing. No, not the tea towel! Ah. Ah. Where's he? Where's oh. he? He's talking! Good on you, Tennis. Where's he? Where's he? Where's he? Now, come on, everybody. I want to take a photo. Well, All, right. All, right. All right, ready? Yeah. Wait there. Oh. Can I have my photo taken? Cheryl, goodness, don't you look pretty. My word, quite the young lady, aren't we? Sarah, take a photo of, of the lovely couple. <laughs> oh, all right. Now, both stand together. Ready? My grandma hasn't stopped talking about your granddad all day. Oh, come on, mm. you two, stop talking. I'm going to make sure they get married and we'll all live together. If they do get married, that'll make you my sister. So what? So that means you couldn't ever be my girlfriend. I think that's a terrific idea. Could you post these, please? Yep, sure. I feel a bit helpless in here. But at least I can say thank you to everyone for making yesterday so perfect. Is there one there for me? Come here. <laughs> Personal delivery. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, just a, a small present for, for the wedding, you know? I heard last night. Thanks, Julie. Yeah, thanks. It was really hard for me to come. I just wanted you to know that I'm really sorry for the way I've behaved and, well, to wish you all the best for your life together. Well, that's the best present we could possibly have. <sighs> thanks, Julie. I hope we can be friends again. I like that, Bryony. Well, looks as though the only thing I can't have is to be with you this afternoon at speech day. I guess I can't complain. I've got everything else I could want. Don't worry, I'll call in on the way there. I'll be waiting. Hi. Hi. Um, <clears throat> you mind if I sit down? Not only if you don't start. Yeah, well, well, that's what I wanted to, uh, to talk to you about, Ida. Well, I'd like to apologise. I'm not with you, Bernie. Why the change? I guess, I, I guess I've sorted out how I feel about you. Right, you don't like No, of course I do. I, I like you a lot. Well, I guess that's been the problem. I, well, I got really angry when you did the things you did. Well, I, I guess I just expected you to be perfect. 
can't keep up with you. Me, perfect. No one is Bernie, let alone me. I <laughs> know. Oh, well, I reckon I'm pretty near the top of the list of people who aren't. <laughs> well, anyway, if, if it's all right with you, I'd, well, I'd just like to pretend it never happened. It's a deal. Like it? It's a wonderful spot. And a bit of fresh air is just what we needed. What do you think of the block? Oh, it's great. And the view, it's beautiful. I was wondering if you might give me some advice on what type of house to build on it. Mm. I think a house is a pretty personal thing. I don't see how my opinion is going to help you much. I think a great deal about your opinion. Besides, it'll give us something to talk about. I don't know what the outcome may be. Well, I know exactly what sort of house I'd like. <laughs> I think I know the sort of house you'd like too. Let's see if our ideas are the same. Huh? Thanks for the lift, Peter. Pleasure. I'd better hurry up and get inside. The others are waiting for me. Yeah, sure. I'm just going to have a bit of a look around. It's years since I've seen the old place. OK, see you then. You should have made that apology to the many students whose studies you've disrupted over the years. What's the use? I hope I never see you again as long as I live! Goodbye, Miss Mackenzie! And thanks for nothing! Shh, Peter. Who wants a lift? Yeah, I do. Thanks. No, but thanks. A friend's collecting me. I'll be like that then. Penny? Yeah, thanks. I'll be with you in a minute. Okay, we'll be at the car. See you later, Al. I'll see you at your place, mate. Don't forget Saturday. I won't. See ya. Gloria certainly seems to have taken to kindergarten. Oh, yeah, she finally settled in. Oh, hi, Julie. Oh, no, don't tell me you and Bernie have been at it again. Oh, no, we had a talk and we think we'll be able to sort things out. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Well, where is he? Kevin's arranged to get him to speech day, just to watch. How's your drive? Oh, great. <laughs> just great. Things are looking better for you and Bernie. Why are you so down? Oh, I'm not. I'm just thinking, it's a shame Bryony can't go to the speech day. She's really been looking forward to it. Afraid she's going to be in hospital for a while yet. Mm, it's a pity. I know how much it'd mean to her. And Kevin. Yeah, but her health's more important. And I'm sure Kevin understands. Yeah, I know all that, but isn't there anything we can do? Yes, Peter. I've come to say goodbye. I'm due at the airport in an hour or so. That was very nice of you to call past. Could I come in? Yes, if you wish. Miss Mackenzie, I... Well, I'd hate to leave without having straightened things up. I'm stubborn. I'm pig-headed. But I have changed a little bit since those days at school. Give us a chance to explain. Of course. I have always been willing to listen. Well, about the beck and call, the reason you got less was because you didn't fare too well on the currency exchange. Now, there is no way I would have cheated you. And surely you should have realised that I would never have accused you of cheating. All I wanted was that simple explanation. Now you know. <laughs> no hard feelings? Don't be silly. Well, I better get going. I'd be up for another day in my car. Oh, rent a car, my word. Things have changed. Keep in touch. Yes. Well, listen, I nearly forgot. I've got something here that might interest you. What's that? It's a diary. It used to belong to Senator Lindsay. Now, uh, it's no use to me, so I thought you might want to have a look through it. What on earth are you doing with that? 
Well, you know, I've been doing some nosing round. Well, I found out that Senator Lindsay was my father. I had hoped the diary would give me some clue as to who my mother was, but it was useless. I've searched every page, and the only thing that seems to come up is the letter E. So it seems he's having an affair or, or something with the person. And I just couldn't get any further with it. Anyway, I'll leave it with you. Miss Mackenzie, are you all right? Peter. He was having that love affair with me. And why well, you've been so stubborn. Oh, oh. Tell me, did you have any difficulty in cancelling your flight ticket? The way I feel, nothing would be a difficulty. Well, do you remember the day that you walked through these doors? Oh, how could I forget? I bet there's no one inside like me today. Oh, no. There certainly isn't. And I'd like to thank my granddad for helping me make this decision. Even though I won't be going on to my final year, I'd like to thank all the teachers for putting up with me and for their help and understanding. And I'd like to thank all the kids who've been so terrific, particularly when we had the terrible accident. Well, just remember who to come to when you need a haircut. Thanks a lot, everybody. Well, I can't say a great deal more than Sarah. I'm not going on with an academic career either. But I know that being a student here has taught me so many things about the real world. Things that'll help me, support me and, well, I suppose most of you know, my wife. I think you all know Bryony. And I know I speak for her when I say how much she would have wanted to be here today. Unfortunately, what the doc <laughs> I think she can say it better. <laughs> School was rough sometimes, but I never thought I'd leave like this. I'd just like to say a few words, if I may. There are quite a few people I have to thank for their friendship. I didn't deserve to have so many people on my side, but I did, and that's so very important. And it's one of the reasons that I'm here today with my husband. There's one person in particular I'd like to thank, Julie Scott. She represents what everyone else has represented for me, love and friendship. I wouldn't be here now if she hadn't talked Dr. Russell into breaking a few rules. And speaking of breaking rules, there are a couple of other people I have to mention. Not because they broke rules, but because... The one and only Peter Beckett. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, what can I say? As all my teachers are aware, I'm achieving my lifelong ambition today to pack this learning lark in. I suppose I should thank them for their tolerance and apologise for my ignorance. For their headache today will be somebody else's headache tomorrow. <laughs> Even if it is a guy who pays out the dull money. <laughs> See ya.
and I will send our children here, knowing that they'll be in good hands. Thank you very much. We have the honour of a very special guest here today. Someone everybody knows. And although her name is now Mrs Denning, I'm sure we all remember her as Miss Mackenzie. Thank you. Well, my word, this certainly takes me back. I have spent some of the happiest, some of the saddest, some of the most frustrating, but above all, some of the proudest moments in this very hall on this very stage. And I look around at these young people who are finishing one life and beginning another, and it comes back to me the many, many faces and friends. They all went out into the world to make their lives. And I always had the greatest feeling of optimism as I saw them pass through those doors for the very last time. I feel very proud to know those young people. And today is no different. I feel very proud that I was asked to give these young people on this stage their farewell and wish them good fortune, good health, but above all, the greatest happiness as they go and find their way in the world. May God bless you and my dearest love to you all. Thank you. Next week at 7 o'clock, we bring you a series of the very funniest episodes of MASH, Monday to Friday at 7. Stay on 10 now for News Nightcast, followed by Bill Collins' picture show, The Duck at the Top of the Stairs, a compelling drama.